Encore Stadium our site this afternoon as the 126th battle for the Victory Bell makes its way into an NFL stadium. It's Miami and UC here on a Saturday afternoon on Red Hawk Radio. I am Lord Nathan Jones for our Red Hawk Radio team with Wes Bully joining you here for live on the field at Paycor Stadium. Once again, 126th battle for the Victory Bell between the UC Bearcats and the Miami Redhawks. And it will be a fun one. This will break the overall tie in this series. These two teams have split it over the past 120 plus years. 59, 59, and 7, the overall record between the two teams in this historic rivalry. You see currently riding a 15 game win streak. Open for that Sweet 16 win streak there on is the longest in the series history. Back in 2021, these two teams met. It was at Nippert Stadium, and UC on route to an undefeated season would knock off the Red Hawks in dominant fashion, 49 to 14. The final in that one, the last Miami win was in Oxford. You'd have to look back to 2005. The Red Hawks would win it 44 to 16. Miami Red Hawks one and one on their start to the year, coming off a 31-14 win over Robert Morris at Yeager Stadium last Saturday night. Avion Smith in his first career start, 14 for 22 for 155 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. Smith, the first Miami quarterback to throw for three or more touchdowns in his first career start since 2014. Two of those touchdowns came to number zero, Matt Kippenhammer, who's been a force for the Red Hawks offensively through the air. Hippenhammer is going to have to be a big target once again for Avion Smith and the Red Hawks. They've got a tough task ahead of them in this UC Bearcats team. Miami defense was really, really strong last week. A pair of sacks only allowed 40 rushing yards against and 179 passing yards to the Colonials on route to the victory. And it's been a Miami defense that has been solid through a couple of weeks. Did a good job containing Will Levis in week one against Kentucky. And in week two, we're able to shut down the Colonials for the better part of the entire game last Saturday. Pick up the victory. Red Hawks will be at Northwestern next Saturday in a newly announced night kickoff primetime on Big Ten Network as the Red Hawks will take on the Wildcats at 7.30. But standing in Miami's way in between now and then are the UC Bearcats 1-1 one one on the season. They were college football playoff qualifiers last year by 13-1 before a semifinal loss in the college football playoff at the hands of finalist Alabama and the Crimson Tide ending UC's magical season a year ago. It didn't start off as well as it did last year for UC. They went into Fayetteville to take on the rain. Arkansas Razorbacks at a slugfest. Came out on the short end to fall to 0-1, but came back home to a different stadium last week to take on Kennesaw State. And UC did what UC does, 63-10 the final in that victory for the Bearcats. So 525 yards of total offense against the FCS opponent in Kennesaw State. Through two weeks, this has been a potent UC offense despite replacing many key pieces from that team that went undefeated in the regular season last year. UC averaging 481 yards per game through two weeks, giving up about 350 on the defensive side as well. And an on-conference series between UC and the Indiana Hoosiers will continue next week. It'll be either a 3.30 or 4 p.m. kick next Saturday at Nipper Stadium as the Hoosiers will come into Cincinnati to take on the Bearcats. Should be a fun one between Miami and UC. It's the battle for the victory bell on a Saturday afternoon from Paycor Stadium here in downtown Cincinnati. We'll take a short break. Red Hawk Radio pregame continues when we return. It's the battle for the victory bell on Red Hawk Radio.
Sky Paycor Stadium here in Cincinnati. Miami and UC on deck in just about 30 minutes. Hawks and Bearcats competing for the Victory Bell, 126th meeting between these two teams, dating all the way back to the late 1800s when they met for the first time. Let's take a look around the rest of college football. Only one game has gotten underway. It was an 11 a.m. start. A game nationally televised on ACC Network. Virginia Tech leading Wofford 3-0 at the end of the first quarter from Blacksburg. Let's take a look at some of the games going on this Saturday in the Mid-American Conference. One other new start on ESPN3 from Dick Stadium in Kent as the Golden Flashes will take on Long Island University. Buffalo travels to Coastal Carolina to take on the Chanticleers at 1 p.m. That game on ESPN+. Plus. Central Michigan looking for their first win against FCS Bucknell. That's a 1 p.m. start on ESPN3. Ohio heads to Iowa State to take on the undefeated Cyclones from Jack Trice Stadium. That's a 2 o'clock start on the Big 12 Network on ESPN+. Plus. Murray State taking on Ball State. Another 2 o'clock start from Muncie on ESPN+. Plus at 3.30, Northern Illinois will host Vanderbilt in DeKalb. 3.30 start on CBS once again as the SEC opponent comes in to take on the American Conference mode. Northern Illinois Marshall fresh off the biggest upset of the year in college football so far. They will head to Bowling Green as the Falcons look to pick up their first win of the season following the loss against FCS Eastern Kentucky last week. That'll be a 5 p.m. start on NFL Network between the Thundering Herd and the Falcons. At 7 p.m. on Fox, Toledo taking on Ohio State. As the Rockets undefeated so far through two weeks, but they are taking on the third-ranked Buckeyes at a packed Ohio Stadium 31-point underdogs tonight. Once again, a 7 p.m. start on Fox. Akron heads to 15th-ranked Tennessee at Neyland Stadium. That'll be a 7 p.m. start on SEC Network Plus. Ranked Pittsburgh, 23rd in the nation, heads to Kalamazoo to take on the Western Michigan Broncos. That is a 7.30 p.m. start on ESPNU. And the nightcap in the Mid-American Conference, Eastern Michigan heading out to Temp to take on Arizona State. That will be an 11 p.m. start at Sun Devil Stadium on the Pac-12 Network. Take a look around the rest of college football, some of the top 25 teams in action tonight. Penn State taking on Auburn, 22nd ranked Nittany Lions will take to the road in a 3.30 start on CBS. Top ranked Georgia heads in to Columbia to take on South Carolina at noon on ESPN. Michigan hosts UConn at noon as well. Oklahoma heads to Lincoln to take on a struggling Nebraska team. That'll be a new start on Fox on SEC Network. Ninth ranked Kentucky hosts Youngstown State from Grover Field. Also at noon, Baylor taking on Texas State from Waco. BYU and Oregon in a clash between top 25 foes that will kick off at 3.30 p.m on Fox in Eugene. 20th ranked Ole Miss heads to Georgia Tech at 3.30 as well. At 4 o'clock, second ranked Alabama will host Louisiana on the road from Tuscaloosa. 5 p.m. on ECC Network. Liberty will head to Winston-Salem to take on the ninth ranked Demon Deacons from Wake Forest. Arkansas Pine Bluff over former Miami coach Don Treadwell will head to Stillwater to take on the eighth ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys that game on ESPN plus at seven also at seven tenth ranked Arkansas Razorbacks who defeated the UC Bearcats just a couple of weeks ago hosting Missouri State Bobby Petrino's return to Fayetteville once again that will be a 7 p.m. start and it will be televised on SEC Network plus NC State Wolfpack 16th the nation hosting Texas Tech at 7 p.m. on ESPN2 Washington hosts 11th ranked Michigan State at 7 30 on ABC 18th ranked Florida hosts South Florida in the Swamp on SEC Network at 7.30. Clemson hosting Louisiana Tech at 8. Also at 8 o'clock on the Longhorn Network, UTSA taking on Texas from Austin. 13th ranked Miami takes on 24th ranked Texas A&M. Fresh off the loss to Appalachian State from Kyle Field. That'll be a 9 p.m. start on ESPN between the Hurricanes and the Aggies at 10 p.m. Utah hosting San Diego State. Final top 25 game tonight will be seventh ranked USC trying to stay undefeated against Mountain West foe Fresno State. That game will be televised on 
Fox. A lot of games going on around college football, but perhaps none more historic than the one we've got here this afternoon at Paycor Stadium, Miami and UC in the battle for the victory bell. We'll come back with a matchup preview, talk about each team and some key players when we return. It's Miami and UC, and it's on Red Hawk Radio. Thank you. 
back here inside Paycor Stadium. Miami and UC are going to go for just about 20 minutes. Battle for the victory bell. The 126th meeting between Red Hawks and Bearcats. These two teams are going to play a neutral site game officially. It is technically a home game for Miami here at Paycor Stadium. There will be a lot of UC fans packing the confines of the Bengals' home field just a few miles from the campus of the University of Cincinnati. Both these teams boast top five win streaks in the country at home. This game will not count towards any of those win streaks on either side as it is a neutral site game. Maybe currently fourth in the country. 15 home wins in a row. Cincinnati second at 27. Only team they trail are the Clemson Tigers. 34 wins in a row at home. Week. The series dates all the way back to 1888. We mentioned the tie in the overall series. You see, it's one of the last 15 meetings to even up the series at 59 wins a side. Also, seven ties between these two teams. Miami's last win coming in 2005. Very historic rivalry, which means a lot to both of these schools. Fifth most played FPS rivalry with 125 all time meetings. Also, the oldest non conference rivalry. In the nation wasn't played in 2020, but you have to look all the way back to the World War II eras. 1944 was the last time, other than the COVID year, that these two teams did not meet. It has been a yearly occurrence between Miami and UC. About 19 minutes out now from kick over some of our keys for both sides. For Miami, still no Brett Gabbard. In the game, we talked about it last week after the collarbone injury. The Red Hawks are hoping that they'll be able to return at some point later on this year for some back play. Maybe some of those weeknight games later on in the season to try and propel the Red Hawks to another potential NAC championship berth and bowl eligibility. But for now, they're going to have to work with the backup and South Carolina native Avion Smith in his first career start last week in the game against Robert Morris. Last week for the Red Hawks, they had to lead on that running game for a little bit, but it's going to have to be even better tonight without Brett Gabbard, we've already talked about. The Red Hawks needing to run the ball effectively. They were able to do so somewhat last week against Robert Morris, but a lot tougher defense to play against this week as the Red Hawks will have to take on the UC team and has been very stingy defensively all the season long coming off the week in which they gave up just 10 points against Kennesaw State. For Miami, we talked about it in week one. The defense has got to be near perfect. That applies to this week as well because they've got another tough throw in front of them in UC. For Miami, the defense was strong for that first half of the game against Kentucky before the wheels kind of fell off in the second half of that one. Last week, the defense pretty strong as well as the Red Hawks getting a little pair of sacks in the game. Limiting to Robert Morris throughout the majority of that game, only giving up one touchdown. He really drive for Robert Morris first of the game. Additional touchdown with under a minute to play in quarter number four. On the UC side, everybody's talking about it. No Desmond Ritter, no Sauce Gardner. Guys, the party for the NFL and graduating from the team. I was ranked fourth in the nation a year ago and had a berth to the college football playoff this year. No undefeated season. That was out of the question in week one, but UC now has something to prove that they are going to be a perennial powerhouse in their final year in the AAC when they make their transition to the Power Five and into the Big 12 next year. Strong performance as expected last week for UC, but it was just business as usual for the team. Once again, at the level, they should win those games by as much as they did. Took care of business in blowout fashion last week. But nothing out of the ordinary for that UC team. Played a tough one in week one in the game against Arkansas. As the Razorbacks gave them everything they could handle, they were in the game late, but just weren't quite able to finish it off in a Fayetteville against Arkansas. As they fell in their first game of the season. They've had a blowout win and they've had a tough loss. We'll see how things shape up as we get into this one, which will begin in just about 15 time. We'll take one final break and bring on Jack Schmelzinger when we return for our final matchup preview and then he along with Patrick Geshe will have the call of this one 
at noon. Miami and UC in the battle for the victory bell this afternoon from Baycor Stadium in Cincinnati. Stay tuned as the pregame show rolls along. This is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio. Inside Baycor Stadium in Cincinnati, of course, fully joined by Jack Schmelzinger as a Red Hawk. The game continues. Jack, Miami and UC, it's a rivalry older than anyone here in the stadium. It's dated back to the late 1800s. This is a game that means a lot to both schools. And, you know, we saw that throughout the week leading up to this one. But just a big game through and through. And really excited to be here at Baycor Stadium this afternoon for another edition of the Battle of the Victory. Yeah, Luke, like you said, this game has been going on for so long. This is the 126th time these two teams have met on the gridiron. Really long-storied history of this rivalry. And right now it's tied 59-59-7, to so this is a tie-breaking game, a really big one. Cincinnati's won 15 straight, so everyone on Miami's campus, basically, especially the students, no one has witnessed a win over Cincinnati. When it happens, it's going to be Bedlam and Oxford. And Miami fans are hoping that's today. Yeah, absolutely. Miami coming into this game, obviously, as heavy underdogs, but you can never rule the team out. This is a game that always generates a lot of buzz, and it's always fun to see on both sides what this means to both teams. We saw a cake down in the UC area of the locker room that they might be bringing out if they get a Sweet 16 win here tonight. We're listening to WLW on the way up to here this morning, talking about bird culture and what this game means to everybody, it's just a game that is really exciting for both sides and just means a lot to both 
of these schools. So really good to see uh, kind of that banter going on between both these teams as they meet for yet another time here today. Well, Jack, it was a back and forth effort, you could say, for the Red Hawks last week. They were able to pick up the victory against Robert Morris, but it felt like at times they kind of left things on the table, especially offensively. But now you've got a really, really tough opponent. If you make mistakes, you're going to be punished in this one, unlike last week. The Red Hawks are going to have to win near perfect against the UC here today. Absolutely, and Avian Smith had a pretty good showing Last week, three touchdowns, one really bad interception, but it was just a really badly placed throw. This is a completely different type of test for him. Last week, he played an FCS team. This week, he plays probably a team that we're going to see ranked in the top 25 of the country at some point this year. So really, for Avion Smith and the Red Hawks, this is going to be a big test. Big test indeed. We'll pause a moment for the national anthem performed by the Miami Marching Band. It's Miami and UC on Red Hawk Radio. National Anthem performed by the Miami Marching Band. Once again, we mentioned this is technically a home game for Miami played at a neutral site. So we got Red Hawks branding all over the place. We got to see all of our Miami staff and everybody that works behind the scenes running things tonight doing a great job. As always, Miami and UC as fans begin to pack into the lower bowl here at Paycor Stadium. Jack, we alluded to it a little bit before we went to break. We talked about the game last week for Miami in a game where the mistakes definitely went unpunished for the Red Hawks. And almost from our perspective, you couldn't even really notice a lot of them. I'm sure the coaching staff found a lot more than we did in the film sessions throughout right. the week. But we just talked about it. It's the UC team on the other side that if you do anything wrong, they're going to capitalize on it. And the Red Hawks cannot do what they did in the second half of that game against Kentucky, which is you make a couple key mistakes, and all of a sudden you find yourself in a 2-3-4 score hole. That's absolutely right. And the story of the season coming into, coming into this year for Cincinnati is that this probably isn't quite as good of a team as they had last year, but these Bearcats had a really good showing against Arkansas, one of the best few teams in the SEC, the best conference in college football, lost to them by a score. And last week they really went and just drubbed Kennesaw State. So they're 1-1, one and one, but it's been two really good results so far on the year from the Bearcats. They're a tough team. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit early on in the pregame show, but this is a year for UC where they have something to prove that it wasn't just a flash in the pan last year and that they're going to build some sustainability and be a legitimate Power 5 program when they head to the Big 12 next year. And so let's talk about those first two games. First, you go to Fayetteville, you go to an SEC environment. Let's be honest, they're all very tough to play in and all very intimidating. We got to see that on the Red Hawks side in week one as well at Kroger Field. 
and they gave Arkansas a whole lot of difficulty throughout that game. They had a chance to win it late. They weren't able to do so, but you know what you can take from those games is that this UC team was able to be competitive with a team in the best conference in college football, and that's kind of the echelon that they want to see themselves in in the coming years. And then you look at week two last week, and you look at what SEC and Big 12 teams do to those FCS opponents, and it's exactly what UC did to Kennesaw State. I mean, absolutely nothing that they gave Kennesaw throughout that game. It was a 63 to 10 final and a pounding for the Bearcats. And, you know, you hate to ignore that win, but really what you can say on the UC side is that's something that they're going to need to come to expect in the coming years when they face off against teams like that in the FCS. You gotta win and you gotta blow them out. And that's exactly what they did last week. Right, and that's what they're looking to do here again today. Last year they beat Miami 49-14. This team wants to hang with last year's team among you know, the legacy of these recent Cincinnati teams. They're gonna wanna really put a hurting on these Red Hawks here today. Absolutely, Miami about to take the field in this game. On our right side, we got the UC students. On our left side, we got the Miami students. The Miami buses that came from Oxford faced quite a delay throughout the early morning, so the Red Hawk fans still kind of trickling in as we get closer to kickoff, but all kinds of black and red on the right side as that ever-passionate UC fan base shows out here in their game in week three. Well, Jack, we talked about being near perfect for the Red Hawks, and obviously that's taken even to the nth degree without Brett Gabbard in the lineup, but going into a little more detail about what that could actually mean. The Red Hawks offensively looked pretty good last week, but we talked about some of those missed opportunities. They would go three and out a couple of times in that win against Robert Morris, and really just had to be opportunistic today on the offensive side if the Red Hawks want to even have a chance in seeing themselves in this game, especially in the later goals. Yeah, and like you mentioned, the Red Hawks here going to have to play mistake-free football for the most part against probably a superior uh, opponent on paper. Down on the field during warm-ups, Avion Smith was looking pretty sharp, a lot of zip on those throws, and they were all right right to the uh, old face mask. So he was looking pretty good down there. He's going to have to stay precise this game if he wants his Red Hawks have any chance with uh, Brett Gabbard out of the lineup. Absolutely, we saw him get a little bit of time in that intimidating environment, although the game was already at hand right. at Kentucky in week one, but definitely the biggest of the two starts in the young career for Avion Smith. Quite a cheer as the UC Bearcats take the field and the fight song blaring here at Paycor Stadium. Miami gonna wear the red uniforms today, UC with the whites. Bearcats will rush out onto the field. This is quite an atmosphere here today and a historic rivalry between Miami and UC. Well, Jack, we talk about it nearly every single week, it seems like, but it always has felt like in the Chuck Martin era, the Red Hawks have had a chance to win almost every game. And although they've been hampered by some injuries, it still kind of has that feeling today. We heard some guys talking on the radio on the UC side today that Miami may not have a chance to win this game at all. ESPN gives Miami a 6% chance to win this game, but really we've come to learn for the Red Hawks that they do a pretty good job of hanging in games like this, especially early on. It's just a matter of can that last, not just two, but maybe three or four quarters as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, the national media, the local media, really not giving our Red Hawks much respect at all. The Miami media, though, that's us three, giving them a little respect. I know that I think the Red Hawks have a chance here. I think you do too, Luke. I believe Patrick thinks the same thing. But like we said, they're just going to have to play mistake-free football. This is probably one of the best opponents they're going to face all year. Definitely one of the best opponents they're going to yeah, face all year. Absolutely. Yeah, you look at that Kentucky team. They're now top 10 in the nation, probably the best team. But this is probably going to fit into that two slot for Miami. You see a higher quality than anyone Miami's going to face in the MAC all year. And you could talk about Northwestern out of the Big Ten. However, that game next week, rather debatable, almost feels like a trap game for the Wildcats as we'll be at that game covering it next weekend at 7.30. Super excited for that. But the Red Hawks really feel that they have a chance in that game to do something special. But here tonight, it's all about tradition. It's all about rivalry. And the Red Hawks really hoping that they're able to at least make this game somewhat competitive in a series that has had its ups and downs. The Red Hawks had a huge lead in this series that has since vanished over the last decade and a half. Over that streak, the Red Hawks have been close a couple of times, a few one-score games in the early Chuck Martin era. 
But the past couple of years, as UC has really built their program into a national power, it has become all Bearcats in blowout fashion over the past couple of meetings. Well, we certainly hope that is not the case, but we'll just have to see. We're only about a minute away from kickoff. Patrick and Jack will have the call of this one, and we'll jump right in to this one. Miami and UC battle for the victory bell here at Paycor Stadium. Patrick, take it away. Thank you very much, Luke. So glad you are with us on this Saturday afternoon here at Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati, the 126th edition of the battle for the victory bell between the Miami Red Hawks and the Cincinnati Bearcats. Patrick Getsch and Jack Schmelz here with you high above the field here at Paycor Stadium. The lower bowl is pretty much full at this point in the game. They hope it gets a little bit more full. A lot of red, black, and white around this crowd here this afternoon, a majority UC crowd as you would imagine. The student section of UC to our right, the Miami student section is to our left. UC in white uniforms with black numbers and white helmets, Miami in red uniforms with white numbers and red helmets. UC will kick to Miami, the Red Hawks won the toss. They elected to receive the ball to start the game out. And so the Bearcats will kick from right to left to get this game underway here from Paycor Stadium as these two teams meet. For the battle for the victory bell, a series tied 59, 59, and seven. UC could take the series lead with a win today for the first time since 1915. The second oldest rivalry in college football. Ball is on the tee on the near side of the field at the 35 yard line for the Bearcats. Their kicker, Ryan Coe, is gonna fire this one away to the two Red Hawk returners back deep in Jalen Walker and Kevin Davis. The sun is out. Really not a whole lot of clouds in the sky. The temperature 81 degrees at kickoff here at Cincinnati. And it, it was toasty down on the field when we were there earlier, Jack. Temperatures on the field probably around 100 degrees or so. Yeah, oh. we were sweating out there, both of us. It was hot. So the ball is on the tee. Ryan Coe will kick it away with his right foot. From the UC 35 yard line from our right to our left. The right foot meets the football and the game is on for Paycor Stadium. Jalen Walker will fair catch it at the Miami 10 yard line. It'll be a touchback and the drive begins for the Red Hawks first to 10 from their own 25 yard line. One of the question marks, Jack, coming into this game, can Miami's offense produce against the UC defense without Brett Gabbard? Yeah, that's right, and it's a really good question. It remains to be seen what Avion Smith and these Red Hawks can do, but Patrick, Arkansas in game one of the year for Cincinnati had a lot of success on the ground. Look for the Red Hawks to try and rush it right down Cincy's throat here to start this one off and establish the run game early. Ball is on the left hash on the field at the 25-yard line for Miami. Two receivers out left, two to the right for Avion Smith. Band to his left in the backfield. We get a whistle here for a flag before the snap. On first and 10 for the 25-yard line, our referee today is Tim Rich. We're going to hear from him today. It's an offside on UC to get us going from scrimmage. Five-yard penalty to push Miami up to the left hash on their own 30-yard line. And it'll be a first and five from there for the Red Hawks. Same formation. Two receivers left, two to the right. Smith from the shotgun, claps twice, gets the snap off, hands it off to the back, to his right in the backfield. Only a gain of about one or two there for the rusher, Keon Mosey. It's the first handoff of the game. They'll give him the 31-yard line. It'll be second down at four upcoming for Miami from the left hatch of the field. Yeah, Mosey just swallowed up instantly there. Those Red Hawk big guys up front just couldn't clear the Bearcats out of the way. Almost no gain there for the Red Hawk running back. Need four for the first down, does Miami. From the 31 yard line of their own. Two receivers up to the right, one to the left. Smith claps twice from the shotgun. Play action, throw near side. There's a catch. Matt Kippenhammer. Enough for the first down out to the Red Hawk 39 yard line. Made a little slant route play to the middle of the field from the near sideline. And Miami with the first first down of the game. Really nice timing there from Avion Smith. A little play action and just fires it. Hits Kippenhammer right off his break. Perfect placement for that ball and a nice little first down for the Red Hawks. So first to 10 for Miami, ball is on the 39 yard line of their own middle of the field. Three receivers out left for Smith from the shotgun. Go up to the line here to bark some orders with 11 on the play clock. Shotgun snap at his hands, hand off to Kenny Tracy. Not a whole lot for number 33 in red. On the rush, trying to cut through everybody there in the middle. They'll give him the 40 yard line for a gain of one second and nine is coming up. 
A little under 90 seconds into our first quarter here from Baycor Stadium, Miami at Cincinnati in a battle for the victory bell. 126th meeting between the two schools. UC has won 15 meetings in a row. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. Shotgun snap for Smith of Miami. Gonna be a play action with Tracy. Another throw over the middle. There's a catch. And Matt Kippenhammer goes into Bearcat territory. Down to the 46-yard line. Another slant route play that worked last time. And it's first and 10 Miami in UC territory. Yeah, really nice job there from Matt Kippenhammer. Finds a little seam in that since he's zone. And Avion Smith fires it in there right on a string. Ball officially at the 47-yard line of the Bearcats. Two receivers out to the left, and one to the right here for Smith. Man who was right in the backfield to Tracy. Smith down on one knee, barking orders to the offensive line with 12 on the play clock. Goes back to the shotgun, collapsed twice, gets the snap in his hands, hands it off to Kenny Tracy, tracking his way forward up the middle of the field. Tracy down to the 41-yard line, it looks like. Pretty good gain on the rush on first down. And a gain of six there, I think, will give Miami a second and four coming up. So far, Tracy out of the backfield for Miami with Keon Mosey. And Matt Kippenhammer's been the hookup for a couple completions for Miami. Second down and four from the Bearcat 41-yard line. From the shotgun, snap to Smith, hands it off. Tracy moves his way forward down inside the 40-yard line to the 36. That's enough to move the chains. Another first down for Miami. The Red Hawks produced 22 of those last week against Robert Morris. Kenny Tracy doing a good job on the ground. So far against the Bearcat defense and maybe hasn't woken up 100% yet. Third rush for Tracy today, he's gained 12 yards. First down and 10 for the Bearcat, 36 yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right, high snap. Grabbed there by Smith, gonna throw deep to the end zone for a corner, and it's caught for the touchdown! Red Hawks get in the end zone on the first drive of the game. Matt Kippenhammer, the athletic catch falling backwards. It is a 33-yard strike. Smith to Hippenhammer, and the Miami fans are on their feet at Paycor Stadium. What a throw from Avion Smith. If Matt Kippenhammer hadn't been there to catch that one, it would have knocked over the pylon from 30 yards away. And a great play by Hippenhammer, too, to create some separation there at the end of the route and just grab that one as he was falling down into the end zone. 11.34 to go in the first quarter. 6-0 Miami. They score on their first drive. It didn't take too long to do it. Graham Nicholson is on for the PAT try for Miami. A touchdown pass for the Red Hawks, and what an athletic play by Hippenhammer. Three catches for 57 yards in the game. And that was a 36-yard touchdown strike, beg your pardon, between Hippenhammer and Avion Smith. Laid it right in there, falling backward against the defensive back was Hippenhammer in the far corner of the end zone, closest to the goal line. Nicholson on for the PAT try here. Play clock down to 16. The snap is good. The kick is up. And through the uprights. And it is going to be a 7-0 Miami lead with 11.34 to go in the first quarter on a touchdown producing drive to open the game for the Red Hawks. You wonder, Jack, a little bit why Miami chose to get the ball to start the game. But it makes sense now. Red Hawks didn't want UC to get all the offensive momentum potentially to start this one off. Kind of have their morale dip a little bit. Really good call there by Chuck Martin to get the football first. And the Red Hawks now have the momentum in the game as we are just getting started here in Cincinnati. Yeah, and if you look behind that end zone the Red Hawks just scored at, it's a sea of red and black. Really kind of a scary student section over there for Cincinnati. You can imagine if Cincinnati had gotten the ball, gone right down the field and scored, this place would be rocking right now. Chuck Martin didn't want that. He chose to receive it off the off the first kickoff. Smart play from uh, Chuck Martin there. So we have a media timeout here on the field. We'll take a quick break, step aside. 11.34 to go in the first quarter. 7-0, the Red Hawks with the lead in the battle for the victory bell. This is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio.
11.34 to go in the opening quarter of play in the battle for the victory bell for Pitcourt Stadium at Cincinnati. Patrick Getsch and Jack Schmelzinger with you high above the field. Red Hawks go down on their first drive of the game, and they take a 7 to nothing lead thanks to a 36-yard touchdown reception from Mac Hippenhammer off the arm of Avion Smith. So, Jack, the game begins just about as well as it could for Miami, but now they got to play defense against a really potent UC offense. Yeah, the Red Hawks are really going to have their hands full with these Bearcats. They have a lot of high-powered weapons, uh, especially in the receiving game, does Cincinnati. Trey Tucker, a really speedy ride receiver. You're going to see him get drafted to the NFL this year. And Josh White, an absolute matchup nightmare. So big, so fast, way too big to get covered by a safety and way too athletic to get covered by a linebacker, even against power five type opponents. So Red Hawks, like I said, going to have their hands full with these guys. It's going to be a handful all game, no matter what, for Miami. Offense, defense, special teams. Red Hawks holding the 7 0 lead. The ball on the team for Nicholson at the 35 yard line. He'll kick it off to the near side of the field. Grabbed on the return. Never mind, it's dropped by number 10 for UC, who's going to have to play this ball out of bounds inside the Bearcat 15 yard line. Well, grabbing that one deep on the return for the Bearcats, number 10. And their star running back, Charles McClellan. He just completely missed the ball, dropped it as it flew through the air toward his arms, kind of deflected off his hands, out of bounds on the near sideline. And first and 10 for UC to get it going from their own 12-yard line. Sleepy Bearcats team early on. Yeah, seriously, and a great break for the Red Hawks. Nice, uh, nice field position for them to start at as they hope to get the ball back, maybe go back and score one more time. First and 10 for UC from their own 12-yard line, Ben Bryant, their quarterback, working from the shotgun, hands it off to the running back, who's not going to get a whole lot on the first play from scrimmage offensively for UC. Gain of one at best for the rusher of the Bearcats. I believe that was number two, Corey Kiner, kind of hard to tell from our vantage point. It'll be a second down and nine upcoming for Cincinnati. And that was Ryan McWood, the six-year linebacker in there for the Red Hawks on the stop, the tackle for loss. Chuck Martin earlier this week just talked about how much that guy's leadership means to this defense. It shows there. Two receivers out to the right for UC. Another handoff on second down. And nine, the Red Hawks get to the rusher pretty early. Charles McClellan, the redshirt senior from Homerville, Georgia, on the rush. 66 yards last week on 10 carries against Kennesaw State. And a third down, about five, coming up for UC. The rush game not working. The first two plays of their attempts on the ground. And that's Ryan McWood in there once again for the Red Hawks. That guy's been here for six years. You think he wants to lose to Cincinnati again today? Yeah. Nobody on Miami wants to. You see last week, five for eight on third down. They get a third and five from their own 17-yard line. From the shotgun, Bryant working. Looks to throw a strike downfield. There's a catch out to the 35-yard line over the middle. The grab is made by Trey Tucker, the all AKC third-team selection last year. First and 10 for UC on the pickup of nearly 20 yards. Ball officially out to the 36-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Bearcats from the left hash of the field. 10.05 to go, open a quarter. Miami leads the game 7 to nothing. A receiver on either side for Bryant. As a man to his left in the backfield. From the shotgun, Bryant claps, gets the snap, walks his way back, looks for a throw, kind of underneath. A shadow play over the middle. It's a catch and a completion, but only about four yards on the play there. Number 81, the tight end, Josh Wiley, had the catch for UC, moving to the near side of the field. Out to the 40-yard line, second and six, coming up for the Bearcats. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left here for Bryant from the shotgun. Man to his left in the backfield is Charles McClellan. From the 40-yard line, shotgun snap, gonna be a play action, throw to your side, slant route catch. The ball is loose, it comes out, and the Red Hawks get it! Jaden Thompson had the catch, and then the ball came out of his arms. At the 50-yard line, the Red Hawks recovered. They had all kinds of red uniforms over there. And Ty Wise picks it up for Miami. First and 10 for the Red Hawks, right at the 50-yard line. 9.20 to go in the first quarter. Slant play over the middle. Thompson was wide open for the catch. And then he had number five in red get his arm in there. And John Saunders Jr. poked the ball free from Thompson, and it was recovered by Wise. And wow, has John Saunders been a difference maker on this Red Hawk defense so far this year. He's already got an interception on the season. He's got a couple pass breaks up. He should have two more interceptions, one that he didn't 
quite catch against Kentucky and another one against Robert Morris. Big fumble punch out there. Red Hawks in business here. Avion Smith going to keep it here on first to 10. The quarterback gets his way for a decent gain down to the 43-yard line. It's a pickup of about seven yards. Going to be a second and short coming up for Miami. Looks like officially a gain of six. Or a second down and four. Ball is on officially the 44-yard line, but closer to the 43. Into UC territory go the Red Hawks. Receiver on either side for Miami. Avion Smith from the shotgun. Will clap once. And then Bark orders to the offensive line and step back with a man who is left in the backfield. Shotgun stop. It's going to be a handoff here. Keon Mosey rushes forward inside the 40. Tackled down near the 35-yard line. Plenty for the first down. Keon Mosey moves the chains for Miami. First down, Red Hawks. Eight and a half to go in the first quarter. Ball is down to the UC 36-yard line at a 7-0 game led by Miami. The 126th edition of the battle for the victory bell. From the 36, Smith from the shotgun with a man who is right in the backfield. Two receivers out to the right, one and two to the left for a Wildcat play here. That's going to be a snap and a run up the middle by number 33 on the rush for Miami. That's Kenny Tracy. And again, about five yards there for a second and five coming up down to the Bearcat 31-yard line. Miami doing pretty good on the rush uh, rush side so far. Pretty consistently getting nice little gains, and that's going to help open up the passing game for Avion Smith, too. We've already seen him have a pretty good go that in that direction so far. Three for three with 57 yards and a touchdown. Two receivers out to the left, two to the right. Shotgun stop awaits Smith. Man who is right in the backfield might be Kevin Davis. It is going to be a play action throw over the middle. There's a catch inside the red zone. Go the Red Hawks. And the tight end, Nate Mersch, makes the grab and up for another first down. Red Hawks to the 17 yard line of UC as Avion Smith keeps on cranking in the middle stages here in the first quarter. Be three receivers out to the left. Nobody out right for Miami on a first down and 10 from the Bearcats 17 yard line. Smith here from the shotgun with a man who is left of the backfield is Kevin Davis. Red Hawks peer over to the sideline for a play call with 11 on the play clock. A little bit of confusion maybe on offense for Miami. Smith from the shotgun gets the snap, get a whistle for a timeout. Chuck Martin calls it. You can tell a lot of miscommunication there between the Miami offense on the field and the coaching staff on the sideline. People running around, yelling things, hand motions, whatever, down below us on the near sideline of the field. That's where Miami is today. And a smart timeout called by Chuck Martin with 6.56 to go. A quarter number one. First to 10 upcoming for Miami from the 17-yard line. Smart timeout for Chuck Martin. But so far, it looks like this Red Hot coaching staff went to the easel, the canvas board, whatever, and made some art this week. These play calls, amazing creativity for Miami. Yeah, really creative and, like you said, just well-designed plays. They're finding guys open. The run, uh, the run protections are looking good because there are big holes for these Miami running backs to get through, and the play action's working out well, too. They've gotten Cincinnati to bite on fake handoffs a couple times and been able to go over the top. It's been really good to see so far. 6.56 to go in the first quarter. We're in immediate timeout. We'll step aside just a moment here from Paycor Stadium. Red Hawk fleet at 7 0 over Cincinnati. And this is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio.
Six minutes, 56 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Cincinnati and Miami of University here for Pecor Stadium in Cincinnati. And uh, middle stage is the first quarter. Jack, this Red Hawks team looking pretty good with confidence right now. We talked about it at Kentucky. The confidence level is there for Miami from the start. This stage isn't too big for Miami either, it appears here this afternoon. Yeah, they've come out looking really poised, really just ready to play. And they've caught the Cincinnati Bearcats back on their heels a little bit. We'll see if they can keep this up. Obviously, we're not even close to halftime, and obviously they're going to make adjustments at halftime. They're right. going to be making adjustments even now in the first quarter. But we'll see. Red Hawks looking to bank some points here. Plenty of football left to be played. Miami, the first to 10 coming out of the timeout. They call the first one used of the game from the Bearcats' 17-yard line. The UC student section probably about 10,000 strong to our right in that end zone. Miami's trying to score in right now, finally making some noise here in this game. They've been a little quiet so far this afternoon. Three receivers out left for Ambion Smith from the shotgun. A man who is right in the backfield is Mosey. Gonna be a pass play as the backfield empties out. Plenty of time for Smith, rolling near side, floats it toward the end zone. He'll have to throw it away, nobody open on that near side of the field. Red Hawks were going for the touchdown shot there, but could not find anybody. Second and 10 coming up for the Bearcats 17 yard line. Yeah, receivers just not able to get any separation at all there for Miami. Good job by Avion Smith to just flick that one out of bounds away from trouble. About all he could do there. He had three receivers out left, but everybody on the near side is kind of where Smith was pushed after the pocket collapsed. Two receivers on either side for Smith. Ball on the right hash from the 17-yard line. Going to be a handoff. Davis spun around from the first tackle. Got swallowed up by the next. It's going to be a loss of about 3-4 Miami back to the 20-yard line. There's nothing there for Kevin Davis on the rush. And a third and long coming up for Miami. Third and 12 from officially the Bearcat 19. Well, Patrick, we talked a lot in the pregame about how the Red Hawks coming in here playing such a good team in Cincinnati. You're going to have to play pretty much mistake-free football. And what one of the things that means, once you get in the red zone, you've got to get points. They need at least a field goal here. Three receivers left, nobody out right for Smith from the shotgun. Third down at 12 for Miami from the 19 yard line. Smith claps twice, gets the snap, pressure coming, throws far side over the head of the intended target. Jalen Walker could not come up with it down near the 15. Probably wouldn't have been a first down play anyway. You see his defense all over it. And so Miami brings out the field goal team here. Graham Nicholson will try a 38-yarder with six minutes to go in the first quarter. Oh, and Avion Smith had Mac Hippenhammer breaking toward the middle. He was pretty wide open for what looked like could have been at least close to the first down, if not the first down, and he just got stuck on that read out there. It, but understandable, such a, such a tough situation for the young quarterback. Three for four on the season is Nicholson from the right hash. 38-yard attempt. The snap is good. The kick is up. And Graham Nicholson knocks it right through. So the Red Hawks get three points after the turnover, the fumble on the back catch by Gene and Thompson. Red Hawks take it for a midfield, down for a field goal, and the score Miami 10. You see nothing. 6.04 left in quarter number one. Got to be happy there if you're a Miami fan with a Red Hawk drive. They get something out of the opportunity they were given with a UC fumble and Miami has the 10 nothing lead as we again have 604 to go in the first quarter step aside for another media timeout Red Hawks holding on to the lead can they keep it when we come back this is Miami football on Red Hawk radio
Six minutes, four seconds to go on the opening corner here from Pancor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati. Miami 10, you see nothing. Patrick Etch and Jack Schmelzinger with you high above the field here from Pancor Stadium, a game in which the Red Hawks have opened up a 10-0 lead thanks to a 36-yard touchdown reception by Matt Kippenhammer added on on the next drive by a 38-yard field goal from Graham Nicholson, and that's the difference in the game so far for Miami. Right now, Jack, a Red Hawk team that knows that UC is pretty darn good over there on that sideline. It's going to be coming here rather quickly, even if this Bearcats team maybe hasn't woken up yet. You know, Miami's kind of expecting a really good drive here for the Bearcats. Yeah, like you said, the Red Hawks really seem to have caught the Bearcats back on their heels, but that's not going to last long. It's no. definitely not going to last for this entire game. Miami not going to be able to take their foot off the gas for one second here if they want to have a chance to continue this potential upset of the Cincinnati Bearcats. And what a big win it would be. What a big win it would be if they could do We're it. We're not there yet at all. We are certainly not there yet. Ball is on the deep for Graham Nicholson from the 35-yard line. He's going to kick from left to right across the field here at Pancourt Stadium back to the Bearcats. Gina Thompson is back deep, I believe, for Cincinnati, along with number 10 in white, Charles McClellan. Going to be the right arm raised here by Nicholson, who will kick it end over end to the near side 30-yard line. It's grabbed there by a UC Special Teams unit man and taking a knee at the 30 with the grab number 18 in white for the Bearcats. That is the wide receiver, Jojo Bermudez. So the Bearcats first and 10 from their own 30-yard line here. Nicholson purposely kicked it short for whatever reason there because UC has such a really good return unit. Right, and we saw the Red Hawks get burned week one by right. Barry and Brown on Kentucky, one of the fastest guys they've seen so far since he certainly has athletes of that caliber back there. The receivers to the right, one to the left here for Ben Bryant. Going to be a quick slant play to the near side. There's a catch, and Thompson is locked up. By his man, it's slammed to the ground by John Saunders Jr. No gain on the play, gonna be a second down and 10, I think, coming up. Just a quick slant throw to the near side. And just nothing there for Thompson on the throw by Bryant. And it really just seems like this Miami defense is playing nasty out there to start it off, just swarming the ball, trying to hit hard. Really not wanting to let these Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bearcats breathe at all. One receiver to the right, going to be a pitch play near side with a rush here. It's going to be Charles McClellan. He's going to be swallowed up about the 38, 39 yard line or so. It's going to be a gain of about eight yards. He's kind of swooped around there to the near side from the backfield. Red Hawks had about five players to help shove him out of bounds. Third and short upcoming for UC. Going to be a third and two upcoming for the Bearcats from their own 38 yard line. They need the 40. UC team that is one for one on third downs early in this one here today. Shotgun snap, Bryant hands it off right up the middle with some room to work. To the near side, cuts McClellan at the 40 35, brought down at the 33 yard line. The Red Hawk tackler was back to make the play. That was number two on defense for Miami and Yasin McKee, but a plenty there on the carry for UC in a Miami territory to the Red Hawk 32 yard line, first to 10 Bearcats. Really tough play for the Red Hawks there. They're the Miami's defense is at its best when it's not giving up chunk plays, but we knew they were going to bend today against the Bearcats. We're just going to have to hope they don't break, at least not too often. Three receivers out to the right, to the left. Empty backfield, Bryant looking to throw. Plenty of time over the middle. Wide open is tight end. Josh Wiley is brought down to the 15-yard line. Red Hawks up the middle of the field. They're wide open and kind of a zone coverage look. Down to the 15-yard line goes UC. First to 10 to the Red Hawk red zone. Patrick, I was reading the scouting reports on Wiley coming into this game. A lot of people are saying that guy's going to be a first-round NFL tight end, and he's a matchup nightmare for teams like Arkansas. Miami just doesn't have the same type of athletes that even teams like that do to match up with him. Pitch play near side, working on the rush to the 10. Tackle down there, Trey Tucker. That time a running back in the backfield, usually a wide receiver for UC. And Tucker will get the Bearcats down to the 10-yard line, they say, for a second and five coming up. Back to Wiley, the redshirt senior. He's a local product from LaSalle High School. He's got all he needs to be an NFL top caliber tight end, 6'6", 250, with the athleticism, just about anybody else out there. Three receivers out to the right. Man to the right in the backfield of Ben Bryant. Collapsed once for the shotgun stop. Hands it off to that man and swallowed up at the seven yard line. A good tackle made by the Red Hawk defense. 
Be a gain of about three yards there for the rusher of UC, number 10 in McQuellen. Down to the seven yard line, third down and two coming up for the Bearcats from there. Red Hawks defense is gonna rush four on this play. Bearcats have one receiver out to the right and one to the left. And to the right in the backfield of Ben Bryant. Collapsed twice from the shotgun. Man comes in motion. Going to be a handoff here to McClellan. Finds his way forward. He's got the first down to the three-yard line. Tackle down officially at the two. And first and goal from there for the Bearcats. You see marching along no huddle offense. Receiver on either side from the shotgun. Bryant with the handoff here. And up the middle into the end zone. Did he get the touchdown? Yes, he did. Bearcats get on the board on the rush play and a two yard touchdown rush. For the Bearcats carry it into the end zone I believe was number 10 Charles McClellan for UC. And the lead now Miami 10, Bearcats six as we have 2.44 to go in the first quarter. Really just not a great drive there for the Red Hawks. Charles McClellan takes it 30 yards up the middle. Josh Wiley wide open down the middle for another 17, and then after that, they pretty much just march the ball right through the middle of that Red Hawk defense. PAT try for score. Yeah, Ryan Cole remains perfect on the season, knocks it right through, and the score now Miami 10, UC 7. We have two minutes, 44 seconds left in quarter number one of play. Didn't take a whole lot there for the Bearcats to score on offense. Pretty quick drive for UC, and now all of a sudden you get a three point lead for the Red Hawks in this game. Yeah, and this is where the mistake-free football that Luke and I were talking about before the game comes in once again. If you're Miami, you know that Cincinnati is going to come down and put a lot of points on the board today. you got to score you know, pretty much every time you get the ball or at least a good number of the times you get the ball if you want to have a chance against Cincinnati here today. He plays 70-yard drive for Cincinnati. Didn't last a whole long, just under three minutes or so. Kickoff will come back to the Red Hawks. Can they answer the UC touchdown there? Patrick Ben Bryant so far today, since he's quarterback, six for six. And McClellan, the only rusher they've gone to so far for 49 yards wow. on seven attempts. So when they've had the ball and been running plays, they've been successful on offense. Tells you right there, a ball off the right foot of Cole. Fair catch for Miami on their own eight yard line made by Jalen Walker. And the Red Hawks with a touchback will start the drive first down at 10 from their own 25 yard line in the late stages of quarter number one, 244 is left in it. Here from Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati. The lower bowl is pretty much full here. The UC fans kind of all over the place in this stadium. The Miami fans mostly in the lower bowl behind the Red Hawks sideline on our near side of the field. Pretty good atmosphere. It's not full at all by any means. The entire upper deck, nobody's in it. But you got a decent atmosphere here at Paycor today. Probably seeing about 35,000 or so inside here. Stadium that seats 65,000. So Miami on offense, again, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Can be a handoff to the man in the backfield for Avion Smith. That's Kenny Tracy, who makes his way forward up the right hash of the field for a gain of three yards. And a second down is coming up at about seven for Miami in their own territory from the 28-yard line. Miami Rush game that's had a decent amount of success today. They're going to try to keep that moving, it looks like here, at least to start the drive. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right for Miami. Man to the left in the backfield of Evian Smith, who claps once from the shotgun, stares over to the sideline for a play. Will clap again. It'll be a play action, a little screen play far side. Kevin Davis room to work to the 30, out to the 34, pushes his way forward for the first down. Kevin Davis, what an athletic play there. They say move the chains. Kind of came in toward the backfield as a man in motion. Then the screen pass to the far side. And Davis, plenty of room to work with up the far side of the field for the gain of about 10 yards. Yeah, like you said, Patrick, a really athletic play from Davis. A really gritty, determined play, too. Just keeps his feet churning. And that's the type of grit determination the Red Hawks are going to have to have today if they want to have a chance at these Bearcats. Receivers out to the right, three to the left for Miami from the shotgun. Smith will work, clap here with 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. Up to the line of bar quarters with seven on the play clock. Smith gets the snap, hands it off to the man in the backfield. It's going to be a rush that gains maybe two yards at best. I think they're only going to give one yard though to Keon Mosey. 
Up the left hash of the field, second and nine is coming up for Miami on their own 37-yard line. And Ivan Pace in on that tackle for the Cincinnati Bearcats, the former Red Hawk. He transferred to Cincinnati this offseason to play with his brother. And he led Cincinnati in tackles week one and week two, so Red Hawk transplant doing good things so far. A little bit down south in Cincinnati. Big time part of their defense is pace early in the season. Throw near side screen play back to Davis. Has a lot of room to work with. He'll make his way across the 40 up to about the 41 yard line, they say, on the second and nine. That's a gain of four. Going to be a third and five coming up for Miami from their own 41. Big third down coming up for the Red Hawks. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. They're going to have to get a play, clock, play off here, I believe. No, they don't is the game clock is a half second in front of the play clock. They're all lined up to maybe make a play. One receiver out to the right, to the left here for Avion Smith, who claps twice from the shotgun. He gets the snap. Smith looking, surveying, in trouble, and he's brought down. Back to the 37-yard line. You see, gets to him. The Red Hawks could not execute the pass play there, it appeared. Avion Smith now will exit the field, limping a little bit. We'll have to keep our eye on that as the first quarter comes to a close here from Paycor Stadium. And Smith kind of grabbing his right leg area and just kind of limping a little bit. Ginger walked to the sideline. Not a whole lot of attention being paid by the trainers. Maybe just a little sore after the tackle there made by UC. And the Red Hawks have a fourth down and eight coming their way with the ball on their own 38-yard line on the other side of this timeout. We're through a quarter of play here from Paycor Stadium. Miami leads UC 10-7. And this is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio. We start the second quarter here from Paycourt Stadium in downtown Cincinnati, Miami 10, Cincinnati 7. At the beginning of quarter number two from high above Paycourt Stadium, Patrick Getsch and Jack Schmelzinger are with you. So glad you're spending a part of your Saturday with us here on Red Hawk Radio. We appreciate it. Just to recap for those just joining us, maybe Miami went down the field to make it a 7 nothing game on what was a 36-yard touchdown reception by Matt Kippenhammer on the first Miami drive of the game. 
Red Hawks followed that up with a field goal from 38 yards out by Graham Nicholson. And UC adds a touchdown in a previous drive late in that first quarter on a touchdown rush by Charles McClellan. And a 10-7 game here as we get this second quarter going. Miami a fourth down and eight in their own territory on the 38-yard line. They are in punt formation here. As we'll see Dom Jobin for the first time tonight for Miami. And back deep to return for the Bearcats going to be Trey Tucker. So the Red Hawks line up to the line. 20 on the play clock here. Plenty of time to get this one off. Jobin here will send it off his right foot. End over end. Spiraling kick to the far side. Fair catch signaled and made at the 22-yard line. A flag though comes out. You have three flags in the field actually. Two are on the 45-yard line of UC. One on the UC 31-yard line. And the officials will talk about it here. It's been a pretty penalty-free game so far. Holding on UC, number 35 gets the penalty. Bearcats whistled for it. That's Brady Young. I believe was the number they said there, 35 for UC. In the throat, another media timeout here, nine seconds into the second quarter. We will keep it right here for you as UC will have a drive start first down to 10 on their own 12 yard line after the holding penalty on the return. All right, so I mean, the feeling out process, I think at this point is done right now. It's who's going to be the better football team in this game. You know the capability of UC, you know the capability of Miami a little bit. You've seen it here today. It's really going to be kind of a dogfight to the end. Who's going to play this game better? Who's going to be smarter coaching wise? All these things are going to start to kind of come into play here as we move throughout the second quarter now. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And a lot of pressure here on Avion Smith and this Red Hawk offense to produce points against Cincinnati. and. We'll see how the defense holds up against Cincinnati and Ben Bryan from here on out too. Ben Bryan, we haven't really seen him showcase his arms so much yet. At least it feels like it, although he's already six for six. Right. But he's a really smart quarterback with what a lot of people are saying is an NFL arm. This is a guy that you could see on Sundays at some point. The second second quarterback this year, Miami's face it is probably NFL caliber. So. Red Hawks can have their hands full, like we've been saying all along with this Cincinnati offense the rest of the way. We work our way here through this media timeout. Cincinnati offense last week against Kennesaw State, they put up 525 yards in that game, 63 to 10 winners in their home opener at Nippert Stadium. And the, the good thing for Cincinnati and their fans on offense is the diversity that they can use, whether it's a pass play or a rush play. I mean, last week you take a look, out of those 525 yards, 293 through the air and on the ground 232 so it's a team that doesn't just attack you with pass doesn't just attack you with rush it can do both and you never know what's coming from this Bearcat team yeah that's right and especially against Miami a defense that is maybe at least Cincinnati probably feels not quite up to their caliber you have to imagine that these Cincinnati coaches were sitting in their game planning meetings this week just almost like foaming at the mouth just ready you know you can throw a lot of different things out there at these Miami Red Hawks and they've been pretty creative so far, so far trying to keep these this Red Hawk defense off balance. And I guess we'll see how effective they are doing that right here as they're about to come back for another drive. Yep. Maybe a first to 10 from the 12-yard line of UC for the Bearcats to get the drive started as this media timeout wraps up here from Paycor Stadium. Student section for UC is all the way from the bottom row to the top row to our right at that end of the stadium behind the end zone. Bearcat students showing up for this game. Of course, not too far of a drive for them down from Hopple Street for the Red Hawk student section. You say what, about 2,000 kids? Yeah, that sounds, seems about right. Obviously a little bit tougher logistically to get to this game for a lot of Miami students, but they did show up fairly well for this game. Too bad, I've never experienced uh, a Miami UC game, a victory bell in Jaeger Stadium. I would love to see what the Miami student section looks like for that game. We'll come next in 2024, that fall. Unfortunately. We'll both be gone. Yep. Next year's game is at Nippert. It's pretty electric inside Jaeger Stadium when the Bearcats come to town. All right, first down and 10 for the 12-yard line on the left hatch for UC. Couple receivers on either side for Bryant. Hand off on the sweep to the far side. Charles McClellan brought down with a gain of one on the play. Red Hawks doing a fairly decent job with rush defense so far today, attacking these top Bearcat players like McClellan and Trey Tucker on the ground. 
the second down and eight coming up. Yeah, Miami especially doing well defending that outside run, really swarming the ball carrier. They have been all day. Ball is on the 14-yard line. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left. Shotgun snap here for Bryant. With well, the man to his left of the backfield. Going to be a little inside pass. Trey Tucker makes the catch, explodes his way out to the 18-yard line. Tackled officially at the 19. Able to spring his way forward for a third down and about four coming up here for UC. From the 19-yard line, looks like third and three. Officially, they need the 22. Trey Tucker there just explosive speed to get the yardage. The receivers out to the left, nobody out right. On his third and three for UC from their own 19-yard line. Bryant will clap twice from the shotgun and look over the sideline awaiting a play call here. He's got McClellan to his right in the backfield. 10 on the play clock here for UC. A little bit of noise you can hear from the Miami crowd. Three receivers out to the left now. Shotgun snap, handoff. This is going to be a rush by McClellan. The ball came out. Red Hawks are on it. Who's got the football? Miami pointing their way and the Red Hawks get it on the UC 20 yard line. The fumble came out for the second time tonight. At the very end of the rush there for UC's number 10 and white, Charles McClellan. And the ball is turned over to Miami. First to 10, Red Hawks on the UC 20 yard line. The second fumble of the game for the Bearcats. Wow, what a big break for the Red Hawks. And it was number 21 for them. Michael Dowell who punched that one out. Was when he saw the replay on TV. Just punched it out toward the end of the rush there from McClellan, who was going to have enough for the first down for sure. It's a great job by Miami to get the ball free there. They got a red zone drive here. First down and 10 from the 20 yard line of the Bearcats. Two receivers out left. Smith from the shotgun working. Plenty of room to move forward. Going to rush it by himself. And he's down to the 16 yard line. A broken play there. He was looking to pass. To the two receivers out to his left. Nobody to go to, and he rushes forward for the gain of about three or four. So the athleticism of Smith there on the rush used to Miami's convenience. It's going to be a second and six coming up for the Red Hawks. The ball on the UC 16 yard line. We are two minutes into the second quarter of play. Red Hawks lead the game 10 to 7. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. Shotgun snap here going to come from. Miami to way beyond Smith. Smith looking, throwing near side of the field. Wobbly pass, hip and hammer brought down in double team coverage. And a flag comes out. It's a lot of contact on Mac hip and hammer. He had no chance of making the play. Pass interference going to be the call here on the Bearcats. Smith was looking to the near corner of the end zone to our left, trying to get the pass away. Hip and hammer was double teamed. He had no chance of making it. Contact from the defender who pulled his uniform as they were making their way over the goal line. That was Ivan Pace Jr. who kind of pulled it away. And we're going to get a ball here for Miami, a first to 10 all the way down to the two yard line of UC. A bigger part of the penalty action, number eight for the Bearcats, Isaiah Cox, the safety, not Pace. And wow, what another great throw from Avion Smith there. Like you said, Matt Kippenhammer had two defenders draped on him. That ball was only where he could catch it. And if he wasn't getting grabbed, he would have caught that thing too. First to 10 from the two. Going to be a throw far side. Catch made by Mars to the end zone. Touchdown, Red Hawks. Inside the pylon of the far corner of the end zone. And Miami takes two plays to get it into the Bearcat end zone after the fumble by McClellan. 16 to seven Miami with 12.39 to go in the second quarter. Just inside the pylon, the catch was actually made by Jack Coldiron. I beg your pardon, not Mersh. Coldiron and Mersh switch numbers. Coldiron is back healthy this week. And Cold Iron just inside the pylon there for the touchdown. You got the kickoff here from Nicholson, the PAT. He's going to drive it right through the uprights. Jack Cold Iron, the two yard touchdown reception. And Miami takes the lead 17 to 7 with 12.39 to go in the second quarter. And Cold Iron coming across the line in the backfield before the snap. Got the throw there for maybe on Smith and snuck behind the UC defense to get inside the pylon for the touchdown. PAT try gives Miami the 10 point lead with 12.39 to go in the second quarter. 17-7 your score, step aside here for Pecor Stadium. We're back in a moment, this is Miami football on Red Hawk Radio.
12.39 to go in second quarter. We're back at Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati. Miami 17, UC 7. Early stage of the second quarter. Patrick gets to Jack Spelzinger with you. Red Hawks score a touchdown coming out of this timeout on a 20-yard drive. It was capped off by Jack Coldiron. Two-yard touchdown pass from Avion Smith. Red Hawks put together that three-point 20-yard drive for the score. Ten-point lead, Jack. Yeah, what a great break there for the Red Hawks. It was kind of looking like the momentum was about to swing back in Cincinnati's direction, and yep. then the ball ends up on the ground. Miami picks it up and scores two plays later. This place is really kind of rocking right now, especially down there on that Miami sideline. People are pretty excited right here, and Miami looking to win their first victory bell in 16 years. Kickoff from Graham Nicholson, a fair catch made by the Bearcat returner at the 10 yard line. It's going to be first to 10 for UC from their own 25. That catch made by the returner at Charles McClellan for UC. Bearcat team that put together a pretty good drive last time up on offense. Fairly quick moving drive as well that produced their first touchdown in the game. It was eight plays for 70 yards. Went a little under four minutes. So first to 10 for UC, two receivers out to the right, one to the left from their own 25-yard line. You get Brian here, the shotgun snap, gonna clap twice. With 15 on the play clock, get the snap in his hands. Pressure coming from Miami. Brian decides to step up and keep it, tackle down to the 30-yard line. It's a good game of about five or six yards. On the keep for Ben Bryant, the redshirt senior from LaGrange, Illinois. Second and four is coming up. And a stop here could be really big for the Red Hawks. If they're able to keep Cincinnati off the scoreboard on this drive, get the ball back, maybe eat some clock on their own drive, yep. get them a nice little way closer to going into halftime with a lead. Got an injury timeout here on the field. Miami defender is down on the far hash at the 33-yard line of UC. I believe it might be number 10. It is. Number 10, Ty Wise, the linebacker's down. He's a big, big part in this Red Hawk defense on one knee. Red Hawk training staff quickly out to take a peek on him as he kind of took a knee there on the field. They blew everything dead with 12-19 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, that would be a really big loss for the Red Hawks. Wise had three tackles for loss, two sacks through the first two weeks, and he's really stepped up as a leader on this Red Hawk defense since yep. transferring in from Indiana this offseason. Walking off the field on his own power. That's good to the near sideline. We'll see if he can come back out later on in this game. We talked a little bit about Avion Smith earlier in the game, kind of walked off from a drive that didn't look so good. He was pretty gingerly walking back to the sideline, limping a little bit. Seemed to be fine in that last drive, so hopefully nothing there for the Red Hawks fans' sake in terms of injuries to Avion Smith. Yeah, and Ty Wise just entered the medical tent on the sideline. Yep. Try to keep an eye out for him. 12-19 to go here in this second quarter. Of course, 17-7 Miami over Cincinnati. We're in the middle of the media timeout. Here from Paycor Stadium. 126th edition of the Battle for the Victory Bell. It's been 15 straight wins in the series for Cincinnati, who could take their first lead in the series since 1915 with a win here this afternoon. The all-time series tied 59-59 and 7. First time they met these two teams was December 8, 1888 in Oxford. It was the first college football game played in the state of Ohio. Interesting. Back That's in 1888. Crazy. And the only other rivalry that is older than this one in FBS college football, Wisconsin and Minnesota for the Paul Bunyan Trophy. That started a few years before 1888. So this is the longest non-conference rivalry in the FBS. And Patrick, I've got a, I heard a pretty cool story this week about the Victory Bell. Do you know the story of Nippert Stadium's, the way that it was named, Cincinnati's Nippert Stadium? No. So it was uh, one of the early Victory Bells back 1923, I believe. Jimmy Nipper was a player on Cincinnati's team, and he actually got spiked during the game. He got a cut from somebody's cleat on Miami's team. He ended up dying a month later uh, due to blood poisoning. Really? And then... So his grandfather was James Gamble of Proctor & Gamble, okay. donated to the University of Cincinnati. The rest of the money needed to finish off the construction of what is now Nippert Stadium, and that's how it got its name, Nippert Stadium. So also, some uh, victory bell connotations there. Wow. 
That's a sad story, but it's it's cool. Yeah, cool history. Sad no. story. All right, so second down and four for UC from their own 31-yard line after the timeout. Two receivers to the right for Bryant, who's going to get the shotgun snap. Look down the field with time over the middle. There's a throw and a catch made by Trey Tucker in a Miami territory inside the 40-yard line. He's brought down. That throw maybe was tipped over the middle there at the line for Bryant. It was kind of wobbly on its way into Tucker, who leapt up, made a great athletic catch. And UC down to the 38-yard line of Miami. And Miami's gotten lucky with two fumbles so far, but Ben Bryan is still 8 for 8 for 64 yards. McClellan, 52 yards gained on nine attempts, so Red Hawks really haven't been able to stop much when the Cincinnati Bearcats keep a hold of the football so far today. Two receivers out left. Bryant looks over there, makes a throw. There's a catch. That's Thompson, who's going to gain yardage to the 30-yard line, brought down on a tackle there from the Red Hawk defender. That was number two in red. It's Sean McKee, the defensive back. He got a second down at about three coming up for UC. The ball down to the 30-yard line. They say officially second and two for the Bearcats. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left. From the shotgun, Bryant's going to work. Claps twice. Gets the snap. Looking over the middle. There's a throw. There's a catch wide open at the 15-yard line. It was number 20 for the Bearcats. That was Jaden Thompson, and UC is in business now inside the red zone. Yeah, and Miami defense kind of sagging off in zone a little bit here, and they're looking like they're just all getting caught on their back feet a little bit, maybe a little sluggish, just having trouble keeping track of these Cincinnati receivers as they weave in and out of their zones. 10.55 to go here in the second quarter. From the shotgun, Bryant, first to 10, 15-yard line, right up the middle goes the rusher, down to the 5-yard line, brought down by Ryan McWood. On the carry there for UC was number 7. And Corey, no, sorry, there's number two and Corey Kiner from Roger Bacon. The first time they go to him on the ground today. He, he looks like second and one here from the six for the Bearcats. And the draw play worked to for perfection there. Bear, uh, ben Bryan just held that ball a couple extra seconds. Miami's linebacker sag off. Yep. And he handed it off right up the middle for six or seven, like you said, actually nine. Bryant from the shotgun, kind of hands it off. Kiner pushes his way forward. He's going to be brought down a yard or two short of the goal line. It'll be a first and goal coming up from there for UC. As Kiner climbed his way, kind of through that area inside the five-yard line, crawling toward the end zone. Red Hawks got to him. First and goal for the Bearcats coming up from the one. Only one receiver out to the right. Never mind, two to the right now for Bryant. Up to the line for the snap, hands off to the man in the backfield and charging his way in for the touchdown. Bearcats, Corey Kiner. Right up the middle, kind of wakes up the stadium a little bit with all the UC fans around it. And with 9.54 to go in the second quarter, the one yard touchdown rush makes it a four point game barring the extra point. Corey Kiner, the one yard touchdown rush for UC. And it's his third touchdown on the ground this season. PAT try on now for the Bearcats. Kicking it away is going to be Ryan Coe. Perfect on the year at PAT tries, and he will remain so. Drives it right through the middle. And the score now, Miami 17, Bearcats 14 with 9.54 to go. In quarter number two on a drive for Cincinnati that produces a touchdown. They use some efficient rush and pass diversion there to get the Red Hawk defense caught off guard. And you got a three-point game again. Nine fifty-four left in the second quarter, and a drive for Cincinnati that went seven plays for seventy-five yards. Two minutes forty-five seconds for the score for the Bearcats. Kickoff will come from UC. They'll move from left to right with a kick. Ball be put on the tee here by Ryan Cole. Send it into the Miami return team of Jalen Walker back deep. Kevin Davis on the near side at about the 10 yard line. This is going to be a big offensive drive for the Red Hawks. They would like to put some points on the board, and best case scenario, they'll score another touchdown and go back up two scores. Right. Because right now it's looking like they're not going to stop this Cincinnati offense. At least they should certainly have it so far. It's been pretty slick sailing for UC's offense so far this afternoon. Kickoff from Cole, gonna be a really strong kick, land its way out the back of the Miami end zone. It'll be first down 
And it's in for the Red Hawks from their own 25-yard line to get the drive going here with 9.54 to go in the second quarter of play. So where everything begins here for Miami, Red Hawks have two timeouts to work with in this half so far. And let's try to see what they could cook up here against this UC defense that's going to wake up at some point. That's right. Yeah, and they've kind of been bit twice by their offense's turnovers, kind of like we saw Miami's defense against Kentucky became right. victim of the offense's mistakes. Two receivers right, one to the left from the shot. Good Smith working here, rolling far side, trying to drop a pass. Going to throw this one away into the UC sideline. He was working there with Hippenhammer, trying to get him open with hand signals, but they never really kind of communicated clearly there. Be a second attempt coming up on the incomplete pass for Miami from their own 25-yard line to our right. Yeah, kind of a nice job there from Smith. He's able to, you know, keep his poise enough to try and be a field general there, point Hippenhammer. Uh, to go a little bit upfield as he's running toward that right sideline and they're just not able to get on the same page. Right. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for Miami. Smith from the shotgun with a man to his left in the backfield. That looks like it is Mosey. And will come across in motion near side of the field. Shotgun snap to Smith, hands it off. Mosey to the near side, trying to rush. Got nothing there, really. It's going to be a loss of one or two. Mosey came deep out of the backfield, trying to carry it to the near side. Play call, it really didn't work. You see read it well. And a third down and 11 upcoming for Miami, deep in their own territory here with eight or 9.25 to go in the second corner. Miami's 0 for 2 on third downs so far. This is going to be a really tough one to convert. Third and 11 from their own 24-yard line. Three receivers out to the right, one to the left for Smith. Up to the line of Bart, some orders. You see student section here wakes up a little bit. Six on the play clock. Movement before the snap. Flag will come out. False start on Miami. Going to drive it back five yards. Everybody was moving there before the snap came through. Five-yard penalty pushes Miami back to a third at 16 with the ball on their own 19-yard line. Now you get a lot of distance to cover. Three receivers out right, went to the left here for Smith. Claps twice from the shotgun, looks over to the sideline for the play call. 18 on the play clock with the man who is left in the backfield. Smith throws it far side, that was incomplete, nearly picked off. Looking for Jalen Walker on a quick screen play, but getting in the way of that for UC was their defensive back. I believe that was number 70 and White over there for the Bearcats who made the play. Number 30, I've tried to get a look at the replay here who broke it up. And it was number 20, actually, for the Bearcats who made it into shot pace. That is the brother of Ivan, the linebacker. So Miami in punt formation. Nicholson is back inside his own five-yard line. Beg your pardon, Jobin inside his own five-yard line. And back deep to return it for the Bearcats. It's going to be their returner, Jaden Thompson, number 20 in white. Kick from Jobin is a good one. End over end, carries its way back to the 30. Caught there by Thompson, moving his way near side. Gets a tackle break at the 35. Up to the 45, he's shoved out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Near side of the field, a good return of about 17 yards there. From number 20 in white, Jane and Thompson. And UC begins to drive close to midfield. It'll be first to 10 for the Bearcats. From officially the 47-yard line, it looks like for UC. Got a media timeout here for Pecor Stadium, 17 to 14 Miami over Cincinnati with 8.27 to go in the second quarter. And this is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio.
Eight minutes, 27 seconds to go in the second quarter of play. 17-14, Miami leads Cincinnati, but the Bearcats will start to drive. First to 10 on the Red Hawk 47-yard line after this timeout for Pancor Stadium. Two receivers to the left, one to the right for Ben Bryant. Works from the shotgun, throws a bullet to the near side. There's a catch. And with Feen in bounds near the 25-yard line, number 84 in white on the grab there for UC. That is Nick Mardner, the wide receiver. They go down to the 26 officially. First to 10 from there for the Bearcats. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. Brian here pitches to the far side. He got a rusher moving. That's Kiner who's going to break a couple Miami tackles. Make his way to the 23 yard line, it looks like, for the gain of about three yards or so. And he got a second down and six or seven coming up for UC. Three point Red Hawk lead. Middle stages at the second quarter of play. Bearcats trying to take their first lead in the game on this rush. Receiver on either side for Bryant. Second down and six from the 22-yard line of Miami. Bryant play action. Throws near side. There's a catch and down immediately to the 19-yard line with an up for the first down is the receiver. And Tyler Scott, the junior from Norton, Ohio. Two catches for 42 yards and a touchdown last week. First to 10, you see inside the red zone at the 19-yard line of Miami. And at some point, this Miami defense is just going to have to bear down and stop somebody. So yep. far, Ben Bryant is still perfect, 11 for 11 for 139 yards, since he also has 77 rush yards so far on just 14 attempts. Two receivers left, one to the right. Bryant floats it near side of the end zone. There's a catch, and he was not in bounds, says the referee. He complete pass, Josh Wiley was in the area, but the pass actually went to the guy they went to last time, number 84, and Nick Mardner, who leapt up to get it on Saunders, but he didn't get a second foot in bounds, I believe, was the call. You can look at the replay, and yeah, his right foot, the plant foot, was out of bounds. Big call by the official down there, second attempt for UC coming up from the Red Hawk 19-yard line. It would be a really big red zone stand here for Miami if they're able to keep Cincinnati out of the end zone, keep the score tied. Two receivers to the left, hand off here though to the man in the backfield and inside the 10, crawling his way forward to the nine is the rusher for the Bearcats. Coming out of the pile was Corey Kiner. Inside seven minutes to go in the second quarter. That's a game there of about five or six and it's a third and five coming up from the nine yard line. Big third down here for Miami to try to stop. They need five for the first, UC does. Two receivers left in a pistol formation here for Bryant. Or the one man to the right. Gonna be a handoff here. Never mind. It's gonna be a keep by the quarterback and going out of bounds with a flag of the play down to the eight yard line is Ben Bryant. He was driven out of bounds. It's gonna be a hold we're thinking on UC here. Kind of a weird type of play. Fake the handoff to Kiner and then Bryant kept it up the near side of the field. Red Hawks read it well, drove him out of bounds at the eight yard line. That would have only been a gain of one. Get our call here from the referee, I believe is talking to Chuck Martin who wants to decline this holding penalty on UC, and that is in fact the case. So it's gonna be a fourth down here. The Red Hawks do stop the Bearcats in the red zone. And the field goal team might be on for UC. Never mind, they're gonna keep Brian on the field. No, the field goal team's coming on now. Luke Fickle looked a little bit puzzled there on making the call. Finally, the field goal team is coming out. And it will be an attempt here from about 25 yards away for Ryan Coe. It was one for one on the year. That's the only field goal attempt that he has kicked. It was a 26-yarder he made at Arkansas in week one. So the ball is on the right hash of the field. An attempt from 25 yards away here for Ryan Coe. The snap is good. The kick is up. And that one will be right through the uprights. Ryan Coe ties the game with his right foot for Cincinnati. And the field goal will make this game a 17-17 not up with 6-11 to go in the second quarter as Cole meets the football and tries it through for three yards. And we are tied for Pancor Stadium. This is going to be uh, another, I mean, we said it last time, every drive for the Red Hawks is big in this game. But this is going to be a big one here with a score tied closing in on halftime. If I'm Miami, I'm going to look to try and take as much time as possible off the clock here. Keep just grinding the ball up the middle. Try to establish a consistent run game on this drive. And like I said, take as much time on this clock off as possible and maybe even put a couple points up on the board. Yep. 
the middle stages of the second quarter. We're all knotted up in the battle for the victory bell. It's 17 apiece. 6 11 to go in this frame until halftime. Go the ball on the tee at the 35 yard line of the Bearcats. We'll kick away to Miami as Kevin Davis and Jalen Walker back deep to return it. Right arm raised by Coe. He'll send this one away with the right foot, left to right from the 35 yard line. High end over at kick. That's going to drop out the back of the Miami end zone. First to 10 from the 25 yard line coming here for the Red Hawks. To start this new drive out with 6 11 to go in the second quarter. We're in a tie game at 17 all between Miami and Cincinnati. So a big time try for Miami. You really want to just at least get a few first downs here, generate some momentum and confidence. Exactly, Patrick. Last time the Red Hawks got the ball on offense, they barely even ticked a minute off the clock. Yep. After going three and out. Definitely hoping to do better here. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun snap away, Savion Smith. Ten on the play clock. Goes up to the line of Park some orders. Returns to the shotgun. The snap over his head. Smith gonna go back and he will pounce on it. That's all he can do. Bad snap to Avion Smith. Chases himself and the ball all the way back to the 15 yard line. That's gonna be a loss of 10 on the play. And a second down and 20 is coming up for Miami. Wow, and really not a good start there for Smith and the Red Hawks. Just a sloppy play. And what probably should be one of the easiest things to do on the field, snap from the center to the quarterback, just gets botched. You see fans are standing up on their feet trying to make some noise, rally their Bearcat defense. Second and 19 officially from the 16 yard line of Miami. Smith from the shotgun, hands it off to the rusher. To his right, that's Keon Mosey. Mosey not a whole lot of the play, maybe a gain of one. And a third down is coming up at about 18 yards for Miami. You got a fight going on on the field. You got a all out shoving match. That play just kind of carried over after Going down on the rush there for the Red Hawks was the running back. Then you had pushing and shoving, just kind of keep the play going. This rivalry is starting to heat up a little bit here at Paycor Stadium. It is. These Cincinnati Bearcats are amped up right now. Place making more noise than I think it has all day long, maybe. Absolutely. At this point in the game. And if you were watching this game right now, looking at how excited these white jerseys are, you would not think that it's a team like Cincinnati against a team like Miami out there <laughs> on the field. No flags were thrown in the pushing and shoving, which involved about five players from either team near the 30-yard line of Miami. Third and 18 for the Red Hawks. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Avion Smith with five on the play clock. Barks orders to his offensive line. Returns to the shotgun. The snap is off. Going to be a keep for Smith on a play action. He's going to rush his way to the 20-yard line. Shoved back there is Avion Smith. For a pickup of maybe two yards on the third down and long rush. Red Hawks going to be in punt formation here coming up most likely with 4.27 to go in the second quarter. And the first play of that drive just kind of sent the whole thing spiraling downward after the snap went over Smith's head. He had to trace back and get it. And it lost 10 yards for Miami. They couldn't really recover from there. Yeah, like you said, just kind of a lost drive from the Red Hawks. They were basically doomed as soon as that happened. And they're just gonna have to hope that they can get the ball back before half and maybe, I mean, best case scenario right now is probably you're going into the locker room tie. That's what the Red Hawks are probably hoping for at this point. Yep. Fun formation, Joman is on from the 10 yard line. He's gonna kick this one away. Spirals end over end. Back deep to get it for UCG and it tops it from the 33 yard line. Shoved out of bounds far side. After a gain of seven on the return, out to the 40 yard line. Of the Bearcats, that's where the drive begins. First to 10 for UC with 347 remaining in quarter number two. We're tied at 17 between the Red Hawks and the Bearcats this afternoon from Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati. Yeah, and Patrick, I'm not sure about you, but it seems to me like that Cincinnati defense might have woken up a little bit at least yep. the last two drives. I think so. I think that little pushing and shoving match, A, woke up the crowd, B, woke yeah. up either side. Maybe UC more so than Miami in terms of players on the sideline. Make it interesting here down the stretch. Two receivers right, one to the left for Bryant, who works from the shotgun. It'll be from the shotgun. Bryant looking to throw with a pocket collapsing over the middle. He complete well short of the intended target there. And Leonard Taylor, the tight end, the ball landed on the turf 
about four yards shy of him as he was posted out toward midfield. Good job by Miami to get pressure there on Bryant from the line. Second and 10 coming up for the Bearcats from the 41 yard line of their own. Yeah, number 90 for the Red Hawks, Caden Woolard, sophomore from Massillian, Ohio. Real just power rush there through the edge and just almost kind of physically imposed himself on that Cincinnati right tackle able to get to the quarterback. Pitch play far side. This is McClellan who gains only about three or four yards up that far sideline. They'll mark him out of bounds. Looks like he got a little more than I thought to the 46 yard line. Gain of about five there on the play. Gonna be a third and five coming up for UC. Simple pitch play to the far side and McClellan able to rush his way up the UC far sideline to gain five yards. Third and five upcoming for the Bearcats from their own 46. Big play here from Miami. If they can stop him on third and medium, they're probably going to get the ball back. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right from the shotgun. Bryant works. Claps twice, snap in his hands. Bryant blitz coming, throws near side. That pass is bad and out of the reach of the intended target. And number 10 in white, Charles McClellan. He was wide open, would have had a really easy first down, if not more. A bad throw for Bryant is going to send a punt team on here for UC with 3.08 to go in the second quarter. Red Hawks going to get the football back and a tie game at 17. And that was a huge stand there for the Red Hawks defense. Now they get the ball back, like you said, with three minutes remaining in this second half. Maybe a chance to, like we said, take the ball or take this game into halftime with a tie, maybe even a lead. Yep. Jalen Walker back deep to get it for Miami from the 10 yard line. The punt will come off here from the Bearcats. Mason Fletcher, end over end kick. Walker trots over to the 15 and grabs it. He's going to return it. Sprints his way out to the 30 yard line. Still on his feet is Walker. Plenty of blockers down the field to the near side. He's shoved out of bounds at the 46 yard line. What a return by Jalen Walker. He had all kinds of white uniforms coming in on him. Everybody thought Walker was going to make a fair catch. He made the catch kind of held there for a half a second and then started to return it and made his way past all the white uniforms to the near side of the field on a return there about 30 yards for Jalen Walker first attempt for Miami all the way out to their own 49 yard line with 253 to go in the second quarter wow and he had a <laughs> lot of blockers in front of him really no one left to beat and then the Cincinnati uh, looked like a defensive back just comes out of absolutely nowhere and tackles him from behind but Walker really almost really really got loose there he still got loose but he almost got really loose two receivers to the left one to the right Smith from the shotgun get a hand this one off this is Kevin Davis past the 50 down into UC territory to the 47 yard line of the Bearcats or maybe the 48 officially will mark it down we'll see where the spot is looks like it is the 48 yard line second and seven coming up 2.35 to go in the second. The clock will become a factor here for Miami. The Red Hawks do have two timeouts left. Cincinnati also has three. Yep. Keep in the back of your mind that UC is going to get the football to start us in the second half of the game, too. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. From the shotgun work, and here is Avion Smith. Will clap twice. Ian on the play clock. It's the shotgun snap off. Smith looking down the field. Throws a home run near side. Hip and hammer. It's intercepted. Intercepted at the 11-yard line, making the play was the safety of UC number eight in Isaiah Cox. Open hammer there, thought the throw was going to be a little bit shorter than it was. It was actually Arquan Bush, banger part of the cornerback, who had his jersey tucked in, couldn't read the number, who made the interception. Open hammer was standing at the 15-yard line wide open. Bush down at the 12, and Bush made the catch. Hip and Hammer just didn't think the throw was going to go as far as it did. Yeah, and you, I can't even really tell if that was a bad throw or not from Avion Smith because Mac Hippenhammer just kind of stopped running for it and yep. kind of stayed where he was, and it looks like if he had kept moving in the direction he was moving, it probably would have been right about at his letters, but like you said, just a nice play by Bush there. That's another guy you're going to see playing on Sundays one day and Matt Kippenhammer just not able to go up and put a fight up for that. Good news for Miami, you see back to start this drive at their own 12 yard line. That's right. So they're deep in their own territory. First down and 10 for the Bearcats from there. Bryant from the shotgun, three receivers out to the right. Sorry, the left side rather. And off here in the backfield, there's a rush that goes for about 15 yards. Right up the middle, plenty for the first down. On the carry there for the Bearcats was Charles McClellan. Gets his way out to the 
the 27-yard line. It looks like two minutes even to go in the second quarter. You got to use the first to 10 from their own 27-yard line. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right for the Bearcats. And Brian here from the shot, going to work it for Cincinnati. Claps twice, gets the shotgun snap, walks his way back, throws underneath. Plenty of blockers here, and the catch made by McClellan. He's out to the 40-yard line with a catch and run there of about 12 yards. Maybe 13 or so. We'll see where they spot him first to 10 for UC. Marching down the field. They're going to stop the clock for the chains. 137 to go in the second quarter. Clock moving now. Three receivers out to the left, one to the right. Another shotgun snap. Pass play here. Bryant throws far side. That ball is caught. For the first down out to the 50-yard line. Late flag comes in too. Tyler Scott left up to make the athletic catch. The late flag came in after he was tackled by two or three Red Hawks over there near the UC sideline. We'll see what it is. It's a face mask on Miami. So that'll give more free yardage to UC. We'll see who came in and make the face mask maybe on the replay. Leaping up for the catch there was Tyler Scott, number two in red, made the face mask for Miami. That was Sean McKee. Yeah, just barely got his fingers in there, but you got to be careful. Yep. So now the ball on the 34-yard line of Miami. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Bryant working in trouble, and he's brought down in the backfield. The sack made by Salopek. We haven't called his name a whole lot so far tonight, but Salopek makes the sack, drives the Bearcats back a few yards to their own Red Hawk 42-yard line. Be a third down, or a second down to 22, rather. From the 42 yard line. Shotgun snap here. Bryant waiting, plenty of time. Pass tipped over the middle. Still a catch though, and near the first down with a reception. Far side of the field went Leonard Taylor, the tight end. About a yard shy of the first down. He got a third and short coming up here from the 26 yard line. Timeout called by Cincinnati with 45 seconds to go in the second quarter of play. Good sack there by Salopec to push. You see his offense back a little bit near the 40-yard line. It was Bryant who went down, was troubled and pressured early. Salopec came in to make the sack. And then all of a sudden, you see charging downfield. These 10, 11-yard pass plays consecutive are just killing this Miami defense right now. Yeah, and it seems like Miami, the last two drives at least, has been having a little bit more success on defense, just making Ben Bryant uncomfortable back there in the pocket and maybe stopping that rush de or that rush offense from Cincinnati a little bit better. But yep. like you said, it's just, it's tough to stop them on three straight downs. And Miami just really has not had any success whatsoever doing that here today, except for two times where they stopped them on third down. Three times, sorry. Third and two from the 26 yard line of Miami. From the shotgun, Bryant hands off the Clellan, charges forward. Enough for the first down on the rush, kind of arcing to his right. Ball is down to the 22 yard line, the clock was stopped to move the chains. Chain gang moving a little slow over there on the far <laughs> side. They're gonna get it started again. First and 10 for the 22 for UC. Bryant looking to pass from the shotgun, throws it near side and the catch, Never mind, not a catch, the pass, rather went through the arms of the intended receiver at Trey Tucker. Incomplete pass just on the other side of the 20 yard line. And a second and 10 is coming up. Clock stop, 31 seconds to go in the second quarter. And this Cincinnati offensive line is doing such a good job today in pass protection. Miami really, other than Salopec a few plays ago, has not been able to get any pressure on Bryant at all. That's why he's 15 for 19 so far today. And it's just kind of a physical mismatch. Cincinnati's yep. offensive lineman so big, and Miami just does not have that type of size up front. That's also why Cincinnati's had so much success running it up the middle today. From the 22, Bryant look at end zone with a pass. That is caught. Did he get his feet in? No. Incomplete, Tucker the intended target. Threw it to the near side of the end zone. Tucker was double teamed there by a couple defensive backs on Miami. 23 seconds left in the second quarter. The end zone shot gonna make it third down at 10. The throw went to Tucker. Left up made a great catch, but only got one foot in bounds, it looks like. Or no, no, I guess he didn't get any feet in bounds. Gonna review it. I don't know if the right foot when he came down near the sideline touched the black of the end zone or not. He was guarded on the play by number 21 in red on defense for Miami. 
the defensive back in Michael Dowell. So the th throw kind of came from the middle of the field and went to the near end zone. Kind of a floater en route to Trey Tucker. Tucker leapt up and made a catch on the Red Hawk defender who was Michael Dowell. Leapt up. We believe he got his right foot. Well, there's going to be only one foot in bounds. It would be the right foot. The right foot did touch the turf, but the question is, did he have control of the ball when the right foot did touch the turf? Just saw a replay angle that said the right foot did, in fact, hit the ground. But did Tucker have control of the football when that ball, when that foot hit the ground? I don't think he did. And another question I think that's worth asking is, did that ball, did that catch even survive contact? Because when Tucker right. hits the ground, they keep on cutting the replay right before it shows it, but it looks like that ball squirts out after Tucker hits the ground. That it did. Yeah, because yep. he doesn't have it when he gets up. Right. So I, I'm pretty sure like that is one of the one of the main criteria for catch correct. It has to survive contact with the ground. I think that that one pretty clearly didn't. He did not have firm control of the football when the right foot touched the ground. The ball was wobbling around in his hands, did not really have both hands on it completely. So that was number one. Number two, he loses the ball when, the, like you said, he hits the turf and Dowell kind of falls on top of him. Yeah, I don't think he has full control of that football and the right foot hits the ground the way the ball is yeah. wobbling. I could be completely wrong, but. No, I'm seeing the same thing here, though. This is a Sean Poley replay. Luke's dad is the replay official holding the screen for the official to look at. And our referee today is Tim Rich, and Luke's dad is holding the monitor that Rich is looking at to give us our call. Taking a pretty long time to yeah. deliberate on this one. So we're still kind of looking over here, talking over it, and we finally have the headset off. All right, a complete pass. He confirmed the ruling on the field, so we were right. Never control the football. And that's a really big call there in the Red Hawks' favor. Uh, you feel a lot better going into halftime down 27, 2017 than 24-17. Yep. And that that extra three that I'm giving Cincinnati isn't even isn't even a guaranteed thing yet. Right. So can. Going to set up here a third and 10 for UC on the Miami 22 yard line. 23 seconds left in the second quarter. Three receivers out to the right, two to the left. Empty backfield for Bryant. Walks his way back, throws near side. There's a catch at the 11 yard line and out of bounds to stop the clock with a first down, number 21 in white on the reception at Tyler Scott. It's the fifth catch of the day for Scott to lead all receivers for Cincinnati. 18 seconds to go and the clock stopped at the second quarter. First to 10 now from the 10 yard line for UC, so first to goal. Patrick, if you're a Miami fan and you're watching them try to defend a team like Cincinnati with such so many great playmakers, athletes on that offense, man, the football field really looks big today. <laughs> Bryant from the shotgun, first to goal for the 10. Throws far corner of the end zone. That ball is complete for the touchdown. Touchdown reception made by number 84 and a really good athletic play leaping up was Nick Mardner for the reception, the wide receiver in the back corner of the end zone. Bryant took a chance, the catch made by Mardner. It was guarded over there by number two and you saw McKee, Bearcats 23, Red Hawks 17 with 13 seconds left in the second quarter. First lead of the day for Cincinnati. The PAT try on now from number 40 in white, and that's Cole. We'll kick this one away with his right foot. Here, Cats tune section wakes up a little bit after that TD reception. Well, it comes with 13 seconds left in the second quarter. The PAT try good. Good snap, good kick, and it's through for Ryan Cole. So UC finds the end zone. It was a reception by number 84 in white for the Bearcats. In that back far corner of the end zone, you had the defender in McKee reach his right arm up to try to knock the football away, but he was not successful in doing so. It landed right into the arms of number 84 in white for the Bearcats. Nick Martiner, the wide receiver. And Martiner's kind of showing up and had a pretty decent game so far today. One touchdown now 
on three receptions. Chuck Martin is fired up with the officials. Near side of the field. Not a surprise, but even more so this time. I wonder so, what he's arguing about. Yeah, I don't know. You got 13 seconds left in the second quarter. Miami's going to get the football back here on the kickoff from Cope. And UC does, in fact, get the ball to start us out in the second half of play. So Cole from the right foot will kick it away from the 35 yard line. Send this one end over end. And it will fall back into the Miami end zone here. First attempt for the 25 for the Red Hawks on the touchback coming up. With the ball on the 25 yard line, of course, 13 seconds remaining in the second quarter. What do you do here for Miami? Do you just take a knee or do you try something? You know, with 13 seconds left, and Cincinnati getting the ball after the half, I'm guessing the Red Hawks do not want to risk disaster and potentially, you know, ending up three scores down yep. not too early in, or not too late in uh, the beginning of the second half. I would guess they'll just go into the victory formation. Looks like it will be that. As Avion Smith to Jeez. get the snap, takes a knee, get a pretty hard push there from the UC line. We push forward, but it was a successful victory formation play for Avion Smith. The team sent to the locker room for the halftime break. Cincinnati 24, Miami 17. The Bearcats received the football to begin the second half of play. First half, the Red Hawks had the lead in, or we were tied for it for the majority of it. And UC takes the lead on the touchdown reception by Nick Marner for 10 yards. It came with 13 seconds to go in the second quarter. And so. It is a 24-17 lead for UC going into the locker room. But overall, thoughts, Jack, I mean, Miami's going to be really happy with the way they played in that first half. Got lucky with turnovers, took advantage of opportunities. The offense looked pretty good. Defense looked pretty good. So you're a Red Hawk fan down by seven going into the halftime break, knowing you're in this game. you got to be pleased. Yeah, like you said, Miami is really right in this game, and that's all you can ask for when you're a team like right. Miami playing one of the better teams in the country going into halftime. Like you said, the offense has looked pretty good. Avion Smith's throws have pretty much all been right on target. The defense has looked pretty good. They've had a little bit of trouble stopping Cincinnati running up the middle, and they've had a lot of trouble making life hard on Ben Bryant, that Cincinnati quarterback back there. But you can bet Chuck Martin, we just saw he was fired up down the field. He does not want to lose this game. He's going to be making some serious adjustments at halftime. I'm interested to see how the Red Hawks come out of the locker room. I think they're going to come out of the locker room feisty. I do too. But you remember what happened at Kentucky week one for Miami, kind of the same situation. Red Hawks right. were in the game, and then Kentucky comes out to start the second half with a kick return touchdown. Not saying that that's going to happen here at Cincinnati, but UC is going to come out firing too. It's going to be a really good second half Absolutely. of play between Miami and UC 24 17, your halftime score, and the Bearcats lead this game. All right, time now for the halftime report, and we send it over to Luke Westpoli. Patrick, thanks very much. UC leading Miami at the halftime break. 24-17, our score with the Bearcats on top. Let's go over how this game went through the opening 30 minutes. As mentioned by the guys, Miami got off to a hot start, a touchdown on a 75-yard drive to begin things. Red Hawks won the toss, elected to receive the kick, and it only took seven plays to get down the field. Three minutes and 26 seconds elapsed off the clock before the Red Hawks were able to find the end zone and take a 7-0 lead on the ensuing drive that would start from the Cincinnati 12 after a miscue on special teams from the Bearcats. They would fumble on their own 40-yard line where the Red Hawks would take over and the drive on offense for Miami then ended with a field goal that was kicked on the Cincinnati 19 as Graham Nicholson would put Miami in front by two scores, 10-0 the score with 6.04 remaining in the first. UC would claw back into this one later on with a 70-yard touchdown drive that took only eight plays. That was a theme for the Bearcats throughout the first half as they moved the offense rather efficiently through the opening 30 minutes outside of their two turnovers. That touchdown was a three-yarder that ended in cutting the lead to 10-7. to Miami would then punt before UC would get the ball back and fumble for a second time on their own side of the field as Miami would take a 20-yard drive 
That took only three plays to get into the end zone for a touchdown to jump back out in front by two scores. UC would respond with a touchdown of their own, though, just two minutes and 45 seconds later to cap off another seven-play, 75-yard drive. That was capped off by a three-yard touchdown to put UC back within three. Bearcats would tie it a couple of drives later on a 16, or pardon me, 26-yard field goal that was kicked by the Bearcats to make it a 17-17 ball game. A pair of punts on either side as Miami would force a big three and out with less than a minute to go in the half, or pardon, just two minutes to go in the half as the Red Hawks would take over on offense near midfield. And a good return by Jalen Walker who was able to Inhibit some trickery. Looked like he was making a fair catch. Caught the ball and ran forward. Got to about midfield, but that drive was halted as an interception from Avion Smith intended for Mac Hippenhammer. Those two weren't on the same page. Would result in Cincinnati getting the ball back on their own 12-yard line. And over 10 plays, they would go 88 yards all the way into the end zone, going the distance in a minute 54 to score the touchdown with just a few seconds remaining on that first quarter clock to take a seven-point lead into the break. UC will get the second-half kickoff when we get back into things as Miami elected to receive to try and get things going with a bang. The Red Hawks were successful in that regard, but as we thought would happen, you see a well-coached team was able to get back into the game midway through that first half and really controlled the momentum and the crowd as well at the end of 30 minutes of play. Go over some of our first half stats. You see out rushing Miami 99 yards to 40. Both teams with pretty even rushing attempts. You see going to the ground 20 times. Miami going to the ground 19 times, but it was the passing game that just picked the Red Hawks apart as Ben Bryant would complete 17 passes for 209 yards in that first half, averaging 12.3 yards per catch. And they are out gaining the Red Hawks in that category through the air, 209 to 76. 308 yards of total offense off 42 plays for the Bearcats, just 116 off 31 for Miami. Just under four yards per play for the Red Hawks, and the big number are is 7.33 yards per play for UC. And that was very evident throughout that first half as Ben Bryant was very, very efficient in marching the Bearcats down the field 10 to 15 yards at a time. It was the Red Hawks that forced more of the turnovers in the first half. Miami threw the interception late that proved to be a bit costly as UC would drive all the way down the field to score that touchdown to take the lead. But Miami is in the game thanks to a pair of fumbles that they forced. One of those coming on the first Cincinnati drive and the second of which coming later on as they were able to force UC to fumble on their own 10 yard line to make easy work for their offense in the short field as Miami was able to take the two score lead that would later vanish. 24 to 17, our score here at Paycor Stadium. We will take a short break, be back with our scoreboard analysis and more. It's the Red Hawk Radio halftime show in the battle for the victory bell. Miami football is live here on Red Hawk Radio.
Back here inside Paycor Stadium, halftime in the battle for the Victory Bell. UC leading Miami 24-17. Luke Westpoy with you here, joined by Jack Schmelzinger in a moment. Let's go over our scoreboard. We'll start with some scores from around the Mid-American Conference in our game. Of course, Miami trailing UC by seven at the break. Also at halftime from Dix Stadium in Northeast Ohio. Kent State leading Long Island 35-10. The score there, Buffalo at half against Coastal Carolina. They're going to get the ball out of half now as that game has just made its way into the third quarter. Bulls trailing in that one, seven to six, the score between Bulls and Chanticleers. With 10-18 to go in the second quarter, no score between Bucknell and Central Michigan. Some more games on tap later this afternoon, getting going in just a few minutes, a couple two o'clock starts, one between Ohio and Iowa State from Ames, another one between Murray State and Ball State from Muncie. Both of those games will be streamed on ESPN Plus. At 3.30 on CBS Sports Network, SEC Vanderbilt comes in to DeKalb to play the defending MAC champion, Northern Illinois Huskies. That will start at 3.30 at 5 p.m. Marshall will take on Bowling Green from Northwest Ohio. That game televised on NFL Network. A lot of eyes on Toledo tonight as they head to the Horseshoe to take on third-ranked Ohio State. 7 o'clock start on Fox, also at 7 p.m. on SEC Network Plus. Akron heads in to Knoxville to take on the 15th-ranked Volunteers from Tennessee. Western Michigan hosting a ranked Power 5 opponent in 23rd-ranked Pittsburgh. That game from Kalamazoo will start at 7.30 on ESPNU. And the nightcap, of course, as we mentioned in the three game, Eastern Michigan heads to Arizona State in a fight between a pair of 1-1 one one teams. Take a look at some of the other scores around college football with games going on right now. Many of the early starts, Georgia on top of South Carolina, the number one team in the nation, leads 24-0 at halftime. Michigan heavily favored against UConn at home. They're up 38-0 at the break. Oklahoma on top of Nebraska, no surprise there, 35-7 the score from Lincoln. Kentucky coming out of the halftime break, leads Youngstown State, 21-0 the score from Kroger Field. Baylor on top of Texas State, 21-7 coming out of halftime. Mizzou leads Abilene Christian, 17-3. Army looking for their first win of the season, leads Villanova, 28-7. Big, big score if you're a Miami fan. As just starting in the third quarter, the Southern Illinois Salukis have Northwestern on upset watch as the FCS foe is knotted up with the Hudson for the Wildcats. Pardon, 14 to 14 the score. Southern Illinois was held off the scoreboard just prior with a chance to take the lead right before halftime, but they do get the ball out of the break and are attempting a drive now as they've just gotten things going in the third quarter. Purdue leads Syracuse 9 to 3. Western Kentucky leading Indiana 17-10 at half in a game that has a lot of interest on the UC side as the Bearcats will see the Hoosiers next week in a 3.30 or 4 p.m. start at Nippert Stadium. West Virginia leads Towson 21-7. And that is it for college football games going on around the country right now. Some 2 o'clock starts going to get going in just a couple of minutes and, of course, plenty of games throughout the afternoon and at night to enjoy. We got a good one here at Paycor Stadium, and now we're going to bring on our analyst this afternoon, Jack Schmelzinger, after a first half of play. Jack, a lot of things to notice about that first half. This gives a lot of what we saw from that Kentucky game a couple of weeks ago. It was a strong start for the Red Hawks, fueled by a couple of big momentum plays. You look at those two turnovers, but you see, as we very much expected from a well-coached and very talented team, got going, their fans got behind them, and they had the lead at the break. Yeah, and it was a pretty impressive showing to start off from Cincinnati, especially on offense when they weren't turning the ball over. Ben Bryant was really efficient, really surgical, honestly. 17 for 22 in the first half, already 200 yards, up above 200 yards in the touchdown. And they did a good job running the ball, too. 99 yards on 20 carries, so nearly five yards per carry. Red Hawk defense, if they want to have a chance here in the second half, especially with Cincy up a score now and starting off with the ball, they're going to need to get a couple more consistent stops if they want to have a chance against these Cincinnati Bearcats. Yeah, absolutely. The key for the Red Hawks defensively, you talk about all those chunk plays that we saw from Ben Bryant in that first half. Every time they put the ball on the ground, especially when Corey Kiner, the local guy, started to get going in the second quarter after minimal use in the first, it seemed like it was five, six, seven yards on the ground and through the air. It was 10 to 15 yards every single play, and Miami's really got to limit that here in the second half. They only forced one three and out in that first half, and it was late when they got the ball back in that first half, and then, of course, they threw the interception before UC drove all the way down the field. 
and took the lead, but it kind of felt like all or nothing for the Red Hawks. Either you force a turnover or UC just marches down the field, just continuing to push you back further and further and further until they find the end zone. And that's kind of the theme for the Red Hawks defensively throughout the first 30 minutes. Yeah, so far today that has really been the case. It's been one or the other. Miami, one thing they really need to work on is that pass rush. They have not been able to get anyone in the backfield so far today against these really big, really athletic Cincinnati linemen. And we knew coming into this one that Miami, especially in the trenches, is probably just a little bit physically outmatched. That's what happens when you play a team that recruits a lot better than you, which Cincinnati does recruit a lot better than Miami. But Red Hawks going to have to work hard, maybe start setting a little bit extra pressure, try to get Ben Bryant uncomfortable back there in the pocket. That's a big reason why he's been so efficient thus far. Absolutely. We saw flashes from the Red Hawks offense in that first half. Of course, that first drive was fantastic. Avion Smith looked really, really good. And of course, it was capped off by just a beautiful throw and catch from Smith to Mac Hippenhammer into the end zone. But Without the short field, it seemed like the Red Hawks really struggled, especially later on when UC kind of got their legs under them defensively in that first half. Red Hawks, the reality is they're not going to get the ball probably too much on UC's side of the field for the rest of the game, especially after the Bearcats have a chance to go into the locker room and make those adjustments. And they really got to be more effective on offense with going all the way down the field, talking about 60, 70, 80 yard drives here in the second half. Yeah, and it's really tough to get that type of thing going against a team that's better than you on paper when you can't get your rush game going. And so far, Miami really has not been able to get it going on the ground. 42 rushing yards only in that first half on 19 rushes. Kevin Tracy, or Kenny Tracy rather, has really been the only one who's had any success at all. He's got 21 yards on five attempts. That's good for 4.2 per carry, but everyone else is down below three yards per carry. So like you said, if Miami wants to get this offense going a little bit better, they are going to have to get that running game going so that they can open up a little bit more of that field for Avion Smith to try and air it out too. Yeah, absolutely. UC Secondary did a very good job. They had the interception and just didn't really give Miami a whole lot in terms of deep threats in that first half after that opening touchdown drive where the Red Hawks really just caught them off guard, went all the way down the field without a whole lot of resistance, uh, quite honestly. But you know, we got a couple more minutes until the second half gets underway. There's a lot of fans that have stuck it out. This is obviously a really good game. It has not been this way the past couple of years. Good to see a victory bell game that's as competitive as it is. But for the Red Hawks, they've got a tall task ahead of them. We talked about how much this game, we compared it to the first half of that Kentucky game. But if it's anything like that second half, this game would not be very competitive for much longer, right. and so for the Red Hawks coming out of the break, you know you're gonna kick back to UC. You know that they're gonna get that efficient offense back out on the field that picked you apart in that first half. What's the key for the Red Hawks coming in early to not only get the ball back, but also just generate some momentum that kind of sputtered to a halt later in that first half? You know, really toward the end of that half, we saw a lot of fire from both of these teams, especially though, I would say Cincinnati, and especially Cincinnati's defense really amped up out on there on the field visibly so even from up here you could tell these guys are really into this game we haven't quite seen that type of passion from the Red Hawks I feel like so far obviously they're here they want to win this game really badly but they just haven't shown quite that same fire that that Cincinnati defense was showing toward the end of that half and I think that that's a big key for them here going into the second just really playing with a lot of fire and we saw Chuck Martin really amped up it down there on the sidelines toward the end of that half once again and I'm sure that he had a great pep talk to these guys in the locker room. We'll see how it worked coming up here pretty soon. Yeah, certainly a lot of adjustments to be made. That first half almost felt like the Red Hawks, I don't know, maybe took some smelling salts before the game or something. That opening five minutes or so, they were flying all over the field, firing on all cylinders truly. But that energy didn't really seem to sustain throughout the rest of that first half. And without that true max effort, pedal to the metal, foot on the gas type of stuff from the Red Hawks. We really got to see why there's so much of a talent disparity between these two squads, as it seems like when the Red Hawks haven't really had that mentality that they've had in the opening five minutes, it's been who has the better team. And it's clearly you see on paper that's been able to have the better of the Red Hawks throughout the first half, despite only leading by a touchdown. Yeah, so, Luke, and, and Sorry to cut you no, off, but after that, after that first drive, uh, Avion Smith was sitting there three for three with 59 yards and a, already a touchdown since then. He's three for nine with 17 yards 
a touchdown and a pick, so he's really got to get it going. Other than the first drive, he really has not been very effective under center for the Red Hawks so yeah. far. And it really hasn't felt like Miami's gotten a whole lot going outside of that first drive, more than five to 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. We saw some unfortunate plays early on in downs that really hurt Miami. You look back to a key bad snap that happened on first down right. that really just doomed the drive like Patrick mentioned on the broadcast of that first half. And it was those early down plays that really hurt the Red Hawks because you talk about losing the battle on the line of scrimmage defensively, but also on the offensive side, it also hurt them a little bit as well because we saw many times in that first half, Miami runs it for maybe a yard, maybe loses a yard or two on the first one, two downs. And now right. all of a sudden you're instead of a third and two, third and three manageable type situation, you're back behind the sticks in a third and 14, third and 15. And the reality is, you're just not going to be able to throw the ball that far down the field against exactly. the UC defense if they expect it. Yeah, exactly. At this point, it seems pretty fair. The Red Hawks still haven't cons converted a single third down in this game, and it seems pretty fair to say if you're not sitting there third and short or you know, a short or third and medium, you probably don't have much of a chance to convert on a third down here. They're going to have to just kind of take small bites and try to get those manageable third downs. Like you said, try not to get there, though, is really the main goal. Yeah, UC's defense has done a good job on the early downs, and they've kept those third and longs very, very tight in coverage. They'll look to continue to do that in the second half. Well, we're all set to get going. 15 minutes on the clock. Miami's going to kick back to UC to begin half number two. Bearcats on top, 24-17, 34 minutes for the battle for the victory bell. Patrick and Jack have the call. And we will toss it over to Patrick right now. Take it away. Thank you very much, Luke. Good job on the halftime report, as always. All right, so we got a second half of the football game. UC 24, Miami 17 to decide who takes the lead in the series. The second oldest rivalry in college football in the battle for the victory bell. The Red Hawks will kick from left to right to UC to start the second half of play in the third quarter in this football game. Graham Nicholson with the ball on the tee at the 35-yard line will kick from our left to our right. Ball on the tee kept falling off. I think someone's going to have to hold it for Miami as the win is kind of picked up a little bit here. Nicholson tried to put the ball on the tee three times now, and it's fallen off each of the three times before he kicks it away. But Jack, nonetheless, going to need a really strong start defensively for Miami in the second half. Yeah, and this is really a huge drive in this game, especially for Miami. Just right. really want to keep Cincinnati off the scoreboard here because if they do score, we could see something like what happened at Kentucky a couple weeks ago happen where this game just really gets out of hand fast. Yep. So the Red Hawks special teams unit gonna kick off here from left to right. We get the second half underway. The right arm is up from Nicholson. He's gonna kick this one really short to the 35 yard line on the far side. That's where UC is gonna start to drive as a Bearcat fell on it at about the 36 yard line. The kick was held there by Red Hawks number 30 in red. That was Mason Moore. Right foot of Nicholson met the football at the 35 yard line. Bearcat fell on it, and it's going to be first to 10 for UC on the far hash of the field from their own 36. Patrick, I couldn't really tell. Did that seem like it was on purpose from Nicholson? I don't know. Or? That's what I'm thinking after what happened at Kentucky. Right, and they did that a little bit earlier in the game, maybe just trying to keep the ball out of the hands of Trey Tucker, the right. really speedy kick returner for the Bearcats, probably one of the fastest guys Miami's faced all year. One of the things Chuck Martin said, the biggest challenge is going to be with shutting down UC and special teams. Going to be a pitch play near side. Bryant to the rusher. That's Corey Kiner. Breaks the first tackle. Tackled down by the second man past the 40-yard line out to the 42. They gain there of about six yards. We'll see a second and four coming up for Cincinnati on the first play for scrimmage of the second half of the game. Bearcats lead by seven. Second and five from their own 42 coming up on the left hash. And right away there, that looked like it was going to be a good play for Miami, maybe even get Kiner down in the backfield. Not able to, though. Bryant from the shotgun, tosses over the middle. That ball will be incomplete, hit the turf. But we get a flag came in, coming in from the backfield. Over the middle of the intended target was Leonard Taylor wide open. Just a bad throw. Hit the turf for it to get a right arm on it. Here's our call. Legal use of hands to the face against Miami. Here's the call. It'll get 15 free yards to UC. Yeah, and we talked about it. We've been talking about it all day. Miami has to play pretty much a perfect football game here if they want to have any chance against Cincinnati. And 
like you said, Patrick, 15 free yards. That is not a recipe for success for these Red Hawks. They, <laughs> they need to, you know, they need to give up the, all of their yards. Right. So they need to make Cincinnati work for them. Is what I'm trying to say. Play action over the middle. The pass incomplete. It was a clean drop that time. Bryant throwing to number 20, Jaden Thompson. Bounced off his arms. Went to the turf. Down near the 33-yard line, over the middle pass. Second and 10 coming up. You see an unforced error there. Going back to the penalties. Third penalty for Miami today for 35 yards. So they've had two 15-yarders and then the false start call in the first half. Two receivers to the right, two to the left for Bryant from the shotgun works here. It is a second attempt from the 43-yard line of Miami for UC. Screen pass near side, another clean drop from a Bearcat receiver. They went to McClellan, who kind of reached above his head for it, could not come in with a grab and hit the turf. And a third attempt for UC. McClellan had nobody near him there from the Red Hawks on the fence. Really, really, really big play here for this Miami defense, third and 10. This might be four down territory though with uh, Cincinnati at Miami's 43. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. A lot of movement before the snap flag comes out. A lot of movement on the left side of the line. Defensively speaking for Miami, gonna be an offside on the Red Hawks. Third and 10, gonna turn into third and five now for UC. The ball will be moved inside the 40 yard line to the Red Hawk 38. On just really a bad mistake there for the Red Hawks. You finally get Cincinnati backed up with a third and long and then just kind of a, a pointless penalty that sets them back and gives them a more manageable third and medium here. Three receivers out to the right, one to the left from the shotgun. Bryant Orks looking to throw, plenty of time to do it. Pressure comes in, the ball is out and UC's gonna recover it. The way it came out for Bryant, it kind of squirted it out, went right to a lineman who made a catch. Number 50 made the grab there for UC in the lineman. Maybe his first career reception. Dylan O'Quinn. I don't know if they're going to give him the yardage or not. And I guess they are. It's going to be no gain on the, or no loss of five on the play. Maybe fourth down here and 10 for UC. That was a weird play. Red Hawks got to Bryant. The ball kind of popped out. And then the receiver was the offensive lineman and number 50 who made the catch. I think there was an incidental kind of pass, just to the right place and the right time to the UC offensive lineman, Dylan O'Quinn. Yeah, and that was Caden Woolard in the backfield again for the Red Hawks. What a big play from him. That sack pushes Miami, or pushes the Bearcats out of field goal range. Punt formation for UC. The kick from Fletcher going to hit turf at the eight-yard line, and the Bearcats will touch this one out of bounds at the five. Good play on special teams there is all the way back deep to get it without any Red Hawks in the area. Just the way the play kind of set up was the defensive back at Kalen Carroll who deflected it out of bounds at the five yard line on the near side. So the Red Hawks, A, do a really good job to shut down UC on a drive that they absolutely had to. And B, okay, now you get the ball on your own five yard line to start the draft. Yeah, and that's a really tough situation for Miami to be like we've said in the halftime report. They've had a lot of trouble getting the ground game going here, and that's obviously what you like to go to when you're backed up against your own end zone like they are. Yep. We'll see if they're able to get something going here. Two receivers left, one to the right for Avion Smith from the shotgun, standing on his own goal line. Gonna hand off here, move it to the near side is the rusher, that's Davis, found a break up the field and got the first down. Out to the 17 yard line, the mark it down officially at the 16. Kevin Davis with a good rush, found room up the near side of the sweeping play. Up the right side of the field, first to 10 Miami from their own 16 yard line, pick up of 11. Yeah, really nice play design there from Miami, a little end around type play, not something we've seen from them much on this young season, but Smith hands it off to Davis, he's able to cut it up field for a nice first down and Red Hawks get some daylight there behind them, between them and the end zone. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, high snap, Smith able to catch it from the shotgun, throws it far side, well over the head of the intended target, that was Mac Hippenhammer. He was posted up at the 26 yard line. That ball flew out of bounds near the 30. Second attempt coming up on the incomplete look to one of Smith's favorite targets in Matt Kippenhammer. Second attempt from the 16. Few personnel changes for Miami here are coming up as we are almost two minutes into this third quarter. 13 02 is left in the frame. 24 17, Cincinnati over Miami. Red Hawks driving here from their own 16 yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. 
Smith claps twice from the shotgun. Seven on the play clock. Marches to the line of Bart some orders. Now gets the snap from the shotgun with five on the play clock. Little handoff and up the right side goes Keon Mosey. Up to the 20-yard line. It's going to set up a third down and about six or so coming up on the gain of four for Keon Mosey. Fifth rush of the day for Mosey. He has 13 yards now on the afternoon. So he got a big third and six for Miami. Two receivers left, one to the right. With the ball on their own 20-yard line. Andrew Smith's left in the backfield with 18 on the play clock. Smith to the line to give some orders again. And back to the shotgun on his own 15-yard line. Gets the snap. Smith looking down the field. Blackett collapses and he goes down. Wasn't really brought down by anybody. Just kind of tripped over at the 16-yard line. Going to be no gain on the play. And the Red Hawks send out the punt team a three and out for Miami after the first down to start the drive from Kevin Davis. Yeah, and it's starting to seem like these Red Hawks are going to need another opportune Cincinnati turnover if they want to have a chance of yep. getting all the way or getting any points because it's looking like it. it's going to be a tough, tough task for them to make it all the way down the field taking small chunks. Receiver on either side here for this weird front formation for Miami. Jobin's going to kick it away though. This is going to be a bounce right at midfield. Trickles its way backward. And the Red Hawks are going to touch this ball and surround it inside the 40-yard line of UC. Looks like they're going to mark him down at the 36 or 39-yard line. 34, I'm told. All right, we'll get the spot when we come back from this media timeout. As the ball is deflected around a few times by a couple of Red Hawks. We'll see where they officially spot it. A little bit of confusion from the officials on the field. First to 10. From the 44, it looks like they're going to spot it for UC when they start to drive when we come back. 11.34 to go, third quarter. Bearcats 24, Red Hawks 17. This is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio. Eleven thirty-four to go in the third quarter of this game. UC 24, Miami 17. Patrick Esch and Jack Schmelzinger with you high above the field at Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati. Bearcats about to begin a drive. First to 10 on their own 44-yard line from the right hash. Two receivers to the right. 
Nobody out left for Ben Bryant, who's going to work here from the shotgun with a man to his right in the backfield. Media timeout is over, so we're good to go and ready to play here for Paycor Stadium. Clapping twice, Bryant, shotgun snap in the hands of the rusher, and it's Tyler Scott, who's going to push the pile and push his way for a decent gain of seven or eight into Red Hawk territory down to the Miami. Looks like 47 yard line. And a second down and two is coming up from there for UC. Gain of eight. Two receivers left. Nobody out right here for Bryant with a man who is left in the backfield for Cincinnati. Bearcats trying to add to this seven point lean over Miami. Clapping twice from the shotgun. Bryant hands off to the rusher, and it's a gain of about three yards. Plenty for the first down. Down to the Red Hawk 45 yard line goes Corey Kiner. And it will be a first to 10 from the Red Hawk 45 for UC. 10.57 left in our third quarter. Receiver on either side here for Ben Bryant. Now you got two receivers out to the left. Red Hawk's going to rush four on the play. And to his right in the backfield for Ben Bryant. Play action. Bryant looking to pass. He's got time. Throws it over the middle. There's a catch. Down to the 25 yard line, number one. Brought it in, Trey Tucker for Cincinnati. A oh, few Red Hawks almost got their hands on that pass as it came over the field. Tucker, though, makes the grab of the 26. And first to 10 for UC from there. Yeah, really good throw there from Brian. Miami finally gets a little bit of pressure in the backfield, and they pushed Bryant down as he was throwing that one. Like you said, he finds a seam in between four Red Hawks who were all really close to that one, but perfectly placed ball in there to Trey Tucker. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Shotgun snap will come here for Ben Bryant. Going to hand it off to number 10 in white, who was brought down without a gain. Really good tackle there for the Red Hawks. Charles McClellan is swallowed up by number 11 in red, who is on the tackle for Miami. That was Corey Suttle, the lineman. And a second and 10 here coming up from the 26-yard line for the Bearcats. Ball is on the right hash of the field. For the second down and 10 play. Two receivers left, two to the right. From the shotgun, Bryant works with a man to his right in the backfield. Pitch to that man, that is McClellan who gets tripped up with a flag coming in on the play. Player is down who made the tackle for Miami. That's number 10 in Ty Wise. Remember he had an injury issue earlier on. He's really down now after tackling McClellan. It was a really good shoestring tackle to set up what might be a third and long here for UC, but the flag came in where the tackle was made. And we'll get our call here from our referee this afternoon, who is Tim Rich. Legal blindside block at Cincinnati. And it stays still second down. It's going to push the Bearcats back, though, pretty deep. Currently the ball is spotted at the 26, so I don't know what they're going to do. Probably add 15. Yep, and they're standing at the 41. That's where they're going to mark it. We have a media timeout here. We'll keep it at Paycor Stadium with 9.26 to go in the third quarter. So now if you're UC, you're pretty much out of field goal range at this point. You get a second and 25 back on the Red Hawk 41-yard line. It's another instance where penalties kind of killing you if you're the Bearcats as they now get... Number 10 in red up to his feet. That injured player for Miami. And Ty Wise, big part of this defense. And he is helped off the field. Dr. Daly on his left. Paul Eversall, head trainer on his right. Yeah, Ty Wise really taking a beating here today. And like you said, Cincinnati, just another unforced error there. Red Hawks took advantage of a couple of them earlier in the game. They're going to look to do that again. And if they want to have a chance here in this second half, they're going to have to make good on these uh, Cincinnati mistakes. Something the Red Hawks have done a pretty good job of as you go throughout this game. I mean, the turnovers, scoring points off turnovers, little mistakes penalty-wise you see as main that the Red Hawks have taken advantage of. You see not completing passes they should have completed that Miami take advantage of as they take Ty Wise right into the medical tent on the Miami sideline below us. I'll tell you what, so whether you want to Agree or disagree with putting the game in the stadium compared to a home site, whether it's Nippert Stadium or Jaeger Stadium. The feel, the atmosphere of this game, you get about 35,000 people in the crowd. Mostly you see probably 60 to 70% UC fans are here. A lot of red, a lot of black, a lot of white as you look 
across the lower bowl of the stadium, which is full at this point, by the way. And then there's kind of a second deck before the large upper deck here at Paycor Stadium. That second deck pretty much full from kind of between each goal line. Right. And the, the upper deck of the field is completely not full at all. There's nobody in it at all. Again, about 35,000 in here. I don't know. I, it, I don't understand the contract negotiations, why, you know, they decided to play it here, what the implications were. I don't know. I, and, and I'm not saying that acting like a know-it-all, but to me, I feel like you just would rather have this game, even if it's at UC or at Miami, just for that feel. It just kind of feels a little empty and quiet here today. Right. And, I mean, that's kind of like, that's like one of the best things about college football, right. which a lot of people think is one of the greatest sports in the entire world, is just being on a campus with people who are really passionate about whatever team's campus you're on and obviously there's lots of Cincinnati people here like you said a decent number of Red Hawk fans but this atmosphere is really good but I'm going to be honest it's not quite like what we saw last year when we were at Nippert Stadium no. between these two teams no. that was probably I would say the most electric college football game I've ever been to including the one in Kentucky two yeah. weeks ago and I know for Miami's sake you don't want to be playing in that atmosphere all the time Right, but the, and the thing that stinks is that this one would have been at Jaeger, and right. I've never been at Miami for a, a Cincy Miami game at Jaeger, but I have to imagine that the stadium, Jaeger Stadium, is like no other time. Gets fired up for sure. Anyway, discuss that for another time. We don't know what the reasons were why the game is here, and this is a good spot to have it. I mean, you can bring as many people as you want, really. Right. Convenient location right downtown. Brian here on second and 25. Going for the end zone. Long throw down the field. There's a catch. And in the end zone for the touchdown for UC is Tyler Scott. Flag on the play, though. Hold it. Flag on the play back at the 35-yard line. I think this might be against Miami. Holding on the Red Hawks. Touchdown for the Bearcats. A 41-yard strike. Ben Bryant over the middle of the end zone to Tyler Scott. And UC takes a 30-17 lead with 9.03 to go in the third quarter of the football game. Yeah, really nice quarterback play there from Ben Bryant. Just recognizes that he's got single coverage with his receiver, Tyler Scott, going right up the middle, a seam route up the middle of the field and throws it up there. His, his receiver goes up and gets it. PAT try on here is Ryan Cole for the Bearcats. It was the big play UC needed in this game. 31-17, the score as the PAT is knocked through. 9.03 to go in the third quarter. An immediate timeout here at Paycor Stadium. 41-yard strike. Ben Bryant to Tyler Scott. And the Bearcats take a larger lead. They're up by 14, 31-17 with 9.03 left. Quarter number three. We're back to Paycor Stadium in just a moment. Miami football on Red Hawk Radio.
Final three to go, third quarter. We're back at Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati. Patrick Etch and Jack Schmelzinger are with you from high above the field. The game, the Bearcats lead by 14 after the touchdown strike before the break. 41-yard catch made by Tyler Scott. Second touchdown reception of the season to make it a 31-17 game. Here at Paycourt, early on in the third quarter, plenty of football left to be played. Red Hawks are going to get it back here after the Bearcat touchdown. You see, will kick off from right to left. And is on the tee with the ball is Ryan Cole, the kicker for Cincinnati. He's actually a transfer from Delaware, playing in his first season with the Bearcats, junior out of McDonald, Pennsylvania. Jalen Walker back deep for Miami along with Kevin Davis. Ball falls on the tee again. The wind has picked up a lot down on the field. You can tell since about halftime. You got more clouds kind of coming into the area. Still pretty much sunny day, partly cloudy you could say. Temperature right now is in the mid-80s here in Cincinnati. So Cole raises the right arm. Is going to kick this one away back to the Red Hawks. High end over end kick is caught at the two yard line. A fair catch made by Jalen Walker of Miami. First and 10 for the Red Hawks. Will come from their own 25 yard line. And Jack in Miami find any answer here to what you see just put together on the last drive. Yeah, it, it remains to be seen. And, you know, judging what we've seen on the last few offensive drives, I would think that, I don't know, that things don't look great right now. But. If you're Miami, you really do need to score here because you can't afford to give Cincy the ball back and have them come down and score on you again. At that point, this right. game is pretty much over. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left. Shotgun stop away to Avion Smith. Looking Chuck Martin and his team cook up here on offense to score some points. Smith rolling near side, looking for a pass. He airs it out deep down the field. That ball is incomplete, and two flags come in. Three flags come in. Intended for Coldiron, the tight end, standing out near the 50-yard line. He was very aggressively defended by the man in white. And that was number seven, I believe, in coverage for UC, Jaheim Thomas. No, number two, I beg your pardon. And Wilson Huber, the linebacker. Mass interference on Huber. The first down to 10 for Miami on the 15-yard penalty. Give it to the Bearcats. Yeah, you had Coldiron get held. Both shoulders were held there. Good call by the officials by Wilson Huber. Too aggressive of coverage. Which is Miami up to their own 40-yard line here. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for Smith. Claps twice. Well, kind of stutter step in the backfield. He's going to keep it here. A little pass to the near side. Incomplete. Really creative play there by Chuck Martin. Could not find Cold Iron. Would have been a gain of four or five there for Miami. Smith just kind of made some athletic stutter step moves in the backfield trying to fake passes and handoffs. And he had Cold Iron there, could not get the short four yard pass from Smith. Second down and 10 is coming up for Miami from their own 40 yard line. Receiver out to the right, you got two receivers out to the left here for Avion Smith, man to his left in the backfield. 13 on the play clock, claps twice, shotgun snap in his hand. Gonna be a handoff here to Keon Mosey, good little rush. Drives his way forward up the left hash of the field for four yards. And a third and six is coming up for Miami. And it will come from their own 44 yard line here with 8.33 to go in the third quarter. Red Hawks trail this game 31 to 17. Third and six is coming up. And two receivers out to the right for Smith. Make that three receivers out right. Nobody out to the left here with a man who is left in the backfield. It's Kenny Tracy. And the Red Hawks still haven't converted a third down here today. That they have not over four. Play clock reads five. Smith from the shotgun. Claps twice. Snapping his hands on third and six. It's some trouble scrambling around the pocket. Smith going to keep it. And he's out of bounds with a gain of two. Did not have the angle to charge up the field. That became the best option for Avion Smith. After the pocket collapsed, no options to pass to. Fourth down and about eight is coming up for Miami. You're going to have the punt team on. Dom Jobin takes the field to send it back to UC. Yeah, and Patrick, a really, really big blitz sent there by Cincinnati. They sent six or seven guys. When that happens, you expect that somebody's going to come open downfield because there's just not as many guys roaming around that secondary. Right. But for Miami, if you can't get any separation, on even on plays that they send big blitzes, you really have no chance. 
Joelman sends a sky-high kick, hits a bounce at the three-yard line. The Red Hawks are going to get to it, and pin UC inside the three. What a lucky bounce. That ball kind of just dead in the air in terms of its movement as Joelman punted it from his own 30-yard line. It went all the way down the field to the three-yard line, took a bounce backward near the end zone, and the Red Hawks able to get down on it very quickly and the first touch made by number 84 in red down there for Miami and Reginald Virgil who made the play to keep it out of the end zone as the ball's momentum was carrying it that way. And then Salopec got in there to just solidify the play and pounce on it for Miami with 7.21 to go in the third quarter. And first and 10 with the ball on the three yard line here to start the drive for UC. Yeah, and Patrick with UC backed up against their end zone, maybe a chance for Miami to see some momentum here. Would be good for the Red Hawks. Middle stages of quarter number three. Right up to the line for the snap is Ben Bryant. Receiver to his left. Could be a handoff to the back of the backfield, but not much on the rush. I don't think any gain that time for the rusher in McClellan. Charles McClellan this afternoon for UC with his 13th carry there for about 76 yards of the afternoon. And a second and 10 coming up without a gain on the play. Patrick, just back to that punt, Dom Jobin really showing off the big leg here today. That's been three really good punts so far. That one obviously placed inside the three-yard line. I mean, this is a guy, speaking of people that we might see playing on Sundays someday, right. Dom Jobin, really talented. And off again in the backfield. Red Hawks get to the rusher pretty quick. Another one to McClellan. They hand it off to him. He's tackled down inside the five, trying to move his way to his right. It's like really no gain on the play there for McClellan. Maybe they'll give him a yard. And a third and nine is coming up from the four yard line of UC. Third down for the Bearcats. You see team that this afternoon is five for eight on uh, converting them. Ball on the right hash of the field, two receivers out to the right, two to the left from the four yard line for UC. Bryant with a man who is right in the backfield works from the shotgun. Snap in his hands in the end zone. Bryant throwing far side. There's a catch. Not a whole lot of room to work with, though. And it's brought in at the five-yard line. But not much else there for the intended target of the play. That was number 80 in white who made the grab for UC. Chris Scott, the wide receiver. And in punt formation come the Bearcats. Three and out. Good job by Miami on that try to shut him down. 5.42 to go in the third quarter. Clock is moving. Bearcats going to send this away, but now Miami's offense really going to have to get cooking here. Going to have decent field position as Jalen Walker back to return the punt at his own 47-yard line. At the UC 47-yard line, actually now he steps up. Punt comes from Fletcher. This one will be end over end, sends Walker back. It took a bounce at the 45 of Miami, and Jalen Walker is tackled down inside his own 25-yard line. He moved his way back, trying to return it. Ended up with a ball at the 30. UC got to him at the 25, and they tackle him down at the Red Hawk 22-yard line. Really good kick by Mason Fletcher. The UC punter is actually from Melbourne, Australia. He played high school football in Australia. His dad, Dustin, played a really good pro career all on the continent, 300 games, 23 seasons of pro Aussie football. And Fletcher recruited to UC to punt, and he does a really good job at it. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. First to 10 for Miami from their own 22-yard line. Evian Smith to the line of bark orders. 17 reads the play clock. Mosey to his left in the backfield. Keon Mosey with a rush. And he'll mosey his way up the right hash of the field for a gain of five or six. Up to about the 27-yard line. Second and five is coming up for Miami. And that's the type of run Miami needs if they yep. want to you know, put a great drive together here, and they haven't had much success with success with chunk plays so far today. They've really not had any success going down the field at all, so they're going to need to get those four, five, six-yard rushes if they want to have a chance. Ball on the right hash, receiver on either side, shotgun snap goes to Mosey on the Wildcat. He tried to move his way forward on the rush, but tackled down immediately after a gain of maybe a half yard at best. Number 18 on the tackle for UC, that's the defensive lineman, Juwan Briggs. And a third down and five coming up for Miami on their own 27-yard line. Down to 4.17 left, third quarter of play here in the 126th edition of the Battle for the Victory Bell. Big third down coming for the Red Hawks. 0 for 5 in that department here tonight. 
Two receivers out to the right, two to the left. Shotgun snap in route to Avion Smith. Gets it with nine on the play clock. Smith going to keep it. Steps up in the backfield, but you see all over it. Bearcats tackle it with no gain on the play. Going to be a fourth and five of coming for Miami. One time, just a simple cornerback keep call there, I think, from Chuck Martin and his offense. Does not work for Avion Smith. UC reads it very well. Red Hawks in punt formation here late in this third quarter. Decent effort there by Avion Smith. Was tackled by his former teammate on the play, and Ivan Pace Jr., who helped him up afterward. Jobin on for the punt from his own 15-yard line. Sends it end over end returner. Jane and Thompson calls for a fair catch inside his own 25-yard line. They'll mark it down, it looks like, at the 24. And the Bearcats will get the ball from there. First down and 10 with 3.21 to go in the third quarter to start a brand new drive in the game. Well, Miami defense needs another stop here. Yeah, that's right. And this time they aren't in the shadow of the their own end zone. So they're going to have a little bit of a tougher task as Cincinnati is going to have a much more opened up playbook here from the 24 yard line. But like you said, Miami just needs to get another stop. And hopefully, eventually, that offense can get going a little bit. Right. The offense has just kind of been the Achilles heel. It seems like second quarter on today for Miami. Can't do anything. Two receivers left, two to the right. Bryant throws over the middle. There's a catch. Trey Tucker out to the 45 yard line and got past it on the tackle. And give him the 45 yard line on the catch. That's going to be a first attempt from there for UC on a really quick pickup of about 21 yards. Tucker, such a dangerous receiver. His speed and his athleticism complement each other so well. He's been all over the field today. Yep. From the shotgun, Bryant looking to pass. Far side, another completion to Tucker, trying to angle his way from that far sideline. Believes he makes his way to Miami territory, and he does. Out of bounds at the 49-yard line here of the Red Hawks. So now you got 240 left in this third quarter. Second and four coming up for UC with a gain of six on the catch and run from Trey Tucker. Two receivers left, one to the right for Ben Bryant, working from the shotgun again with a receiver, or sorry, a back to his right in the backfield. Second down and four from the Red Hawk 49 yard line. Play action, Bryant over the middle. There's a throw and it's intercepted. Got tipped and caught. The Red Hawk returner with it at his own 38 yard line. He's locked up there. Number six on the interception for Miami. That's Jacquez Warren, the defensive back. And Miami might be in business here. That might be the turn the Red Hawks kind of needed. The third turnover of the day for UC. It's a tipped throw. That goes right into the hands of Jacquez Warren, the intended target for the Bearcats is number 80 in white. Their wide receiver who tipped the ball with his hands and it went right to Warren. Number 80, Chris Scott, was the intended target. First to 10 for Miami on their own 39-yard line. Patrick, I think this is a good time to remind our listeners that Miami is really not out of this game whatsoever right now. It's a 14-point game. If they score here, get another stop and another score. This game's tied. It's really, I mean, it kind of feels like it's out of reach, but it's really not. Two receivers, three receivers now to the left. Smith from the shotgun works on a play action here. Plenty of time. Pocket collapses. Moving near side. Smith trying to find an angle on the keep. Gets out of bounds near the 40. I think he got out in about, looks like the 39 or so. So that'll be a gain of maybe one, if that, for Avion Smith on the keep. The pass play there. No options down the field. You see doing a good job shutting down the pass lanes for Miami on offense today, especially in the second half of the game, second and 10 coming up from the 39. Yeah, Patrick, like you said, since he, that secondary just doing such a good job, it feels like every time Avion Smith has enough, has, you know, two or three seconds in the pocket, enough time that me up here, I can look out at the receivers downfield. There's just no room for him. Rush here near side of the field, Kevin Davis locked up past the 40 to the 43 yard line. They're actually going to give him only the 42 there. Going to be a second down, no, third down at seven or so coming up for Miami. A little bit of confusion on where the spot is. Looks like they'll put it down to the 43-yard line. So he'll be at third down and about six coming up. 108 to go in the third quarter. Red Hawks really need this one here. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Shotgun working is Avion Smith. Man who is left in the backfield is Kenny Tracy. 
Red Hawk offense steers to the sideline for the play call with 10 to go on the play clock. Smith gets the snap. Blitz coming over the middle, the throw incomplete. A little bit ahead of the intended target. That was Jack Coldiron, the tight end. We have a flag though on the play. From the referee who threw it in the backfield near where Smith was hit late in the play. It's gonna be a rough in the passer call on UC. I don't know who made the hit on Smith trying to watch the pass down the field, but someone made a late hit on Avion Smith and the Red Hawks get a free first down and they will take it here in this third quarter late in it. It's like number 97 or maybe was on the call. For UC, they got Eric Phillips. First to 10 for Miami, the ball on the 42 yard line of the Bearcats. They're now into Bearcat territory. Two receivers to the left, now three receivers left for Smith. Shotgun snap, looking to throw far side, no options there. Smith scrambling around, and the pocket, he's just gonna throw this one well away in the near sideline. Chuck Martin wants another rough of the passer call as Smith was contacted there late in the play. I don't know if he had any receivers in the area, no flag though yet is out. No penalty for intentional groundings, he was well out of the pocket they say, so it'd be second and 10 coming up from the 42 yard line of UC for Miami. And once again, just no one open downfield for the Red Hawks. Avian Smith, once again, had a lot of time back there, just unable to find anyone because there's no one to find. Yep. Second and 10, two receivers left, one to the right. Man two, Smith's left in the backfield. Gonna be a play action throw far side. There's a catch, that is a completion on a slant route to the 37 yard line for a gain of a few yards. Catch was brought in there by Mac Hippenhammer. Gonna be a third and medium distance coming up for Miami, about a third and five. On the Bearcat 37 yard line with 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Miami will not have to get a play, play off before the quarter's over. You get 14 on the game clock now with 20 on the play clock. And with well, Miami down on Cincinnati's 37 right now, you think this might be four down territory. They right. might give themselves two chances here to get the first down. Two receivers left, one to the right. And they're going to just let the game clock run out here to win the third quarter of play. For a big third and five, Red Hawks pretty much out of field goal range at this point. You're looking at a 54-55 yarder from Nicholson. They really need a touchdown though sooner rather than later down by 14 in this game as we end the third quarter here for Paycor Stadium. Yeah, so, that's right. And a nice, sorry Patrick, no, but another nice thing about that, the quarter changing, they're going to move over to the other side of the, right. other side of the field and get away from that packed Cincinnati student section. So Miami will score in the end zone, which is in front of their own student section now, instead of the rowdy Bearcat students that are to our right in the end zone there. All right, after three quarters of play, we'll take a quick break. 31-17, UC leads it over Miami. 15 minutes left to go from Paycor Stadium. And this is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio.
Welcome back to Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati. Bearcats 31, Red Hawks 17 as we start the fourth quarter here in the battle for the victory bell, the 126th edition of it. Patrick Escher, Jack Schmelzinger with you high above the field here from Paycor Stadium. All right, Jack, so you get a 14-point deficit. If you're the Red Hawks with 15 minutes left on the clock, that's it. And for Miami, number one, you got to get the offense cranking here. A big third and five is coming up, but number two, defensively, you're just going to have to limit UC to no more points the rest of this game if you want a chance, realistically. Yeah, if we're being realistic, it's unlikely that the Red Hawks even score two more touchdowns yep. in the next 15 minutes. And anything else other than that kind of seems like a pipe dream at this point. So like you said, starts with converting this third down. It would be the first one they've converted all game. And after that, you just got to play mistake-free football for the rest of the way. And they're still in this game. I think that they're in this game to the point that mistake-free football the rest of the way gives them a pretty good chance to come back in this one. You never know. See crazier things in this sport? Certainly not over yet. You're from Paycor Stadium. What's been a beautiful day for football in downtown Cincinnati, mid-80s, partly cloudy. It's been an enjoyable one for what we're guessing is the 35,000 plus in attendance here from Paycor Stadium so far this afternoon. Big third and five coming up for Miami to start the fourth quarter of play. The ball is on the 37-yard line of the Bearcats. Two receivers to the left and one to the right for Avion Smith, who is right up to the line for the snap in a pistol formation here. The back is Keon Mosey. 18 on the play clock. Man in motion comes across. That's Davis. Going to be a hey, play action. You got Smith throwing it down the field near side. That is a catch made by Jalen Walker inside the 10 yard line. They'll give him the nine. And the Red Hawks pick up the third and five and get inside the Bearcat 10 yard line, 10 seconds into the fourth quarter. Oh, what a beautiful play from the Red Hawks. And finally, Avion Smith has a receiver to throw to. Jalen Walker gets just a, a step, half a step, on that Cincinnati defensive back running across the field. And Avion Smith puts it perfectly in the basket, right where no one else but him could catch it. Red Hawks are in business here inside the 10. First and goal from the nine. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Kenny Tracy, the handoff, stumbles his way forward to the six yard line. Gain of three on the play, gonna be second and goal from the Bearcats, six for Miami. The strike, the connection between Jalen Walker and Avion Smith, Miami desperately needed at that time in the game. A minute into our fourth quarter of play. Ball on the six yard line. UC leads the game by 14, 31, 17 the score. Receiver on either side here for Avion Smith. Kicks a man in motion. Right up to the line for the snap. Another pistol formation. Another man in motion comes across Davis. Gonna be a handoff to Davis. Plenty of speed. Five, three, pushing his way forward. And they're gonna mark it down at the one yard line. I think Davis maybe had a chance to get it there. Well, they wanna review that. I'm not saying that as a Miami homer at all. I'm saying it factually. I'm the only Miami homer on this broadcast, Patrick. Well, Luke, too. But. We got an injured Bearcat on the play. Uh, Davis didn't get a knee down at the one. That's a good call. As we look at the replay, I mean, third and goal for the one for Miami. A big time third and goal here. And you got an injured Bearcat down in the end zone far side. You had about three Bearcats that were trying to tackle down Davis there, falling backward. We're all three of them as they kind of tackled him from in front of his body moving forward. Kind of a weird play in the way it's set up. That's number nine for UC. Big time player in this game. Their cornerback in Arquan Bush. And it was made a few good defensive plays for the Bearcats. Including the big interception a few right. drives ago. He's going to jog off the field on his own power. Maybe sit out of play here to shake it up or something after the collision. He got a big third and one coming up for Miami. The ball. One yard away from a touchdown and making this maybe a one-score game. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. From the shotgun works Avion Smith with a man who is right in the backfield on third down and one. Smith claps twice, going to hand off Kenny Tracy fighting forward. Did he get there? Not at all, not a chance. Not a chance for Kenny Tracy. No gain on the play, brought down at the one-yard line. And now if you're Chuck Martin, you get decision time to make. Do you go for it? Do you kick the field goal? Looks like they might be going for it. Mosey's coming out. Hammer's coming out. Kenny Tracy is coming back to the sideline. 
Fourth down and one for Miami. Fourth and goal from the one we should say in a 14 point game led by UC. And this stadium is louder right now than it has been all day. Everybody get to their feet. Two receivers out to the left, nobody on right. And off play, Smith never mind, play action, scrambling in the backfield, Smith fighting forward. Did he get there to the end zone? They're gonna say he's probably two inches short. What an effort by Avion Smith to stretch the football out at the end of the rush. He could have been tackled back in the four, but fought his way forward. And the referees say he's about two inches shy of the goal line. They're gonna obviously review it. I hope they review it. Look very close. It's gonna be first at 10, UC, the referee announces, and we look at the replay now, I think he was short. It's supposed to be a design play action on the far side, but then Smith fought his way forward. After that didn't quite work, and he was brought down, yeah, very short. Probably five inches short of the goal line as we look at the replay. Like you said though, Patrick, such a great effort from Smith, evades one tackler, breaks through another, drags one guy about two yards, and finally gets brought down by the fourth Cincinnati tackler, just like you said, two inches from the goal line. So, so close for Avion Smith to making this a one-score game. Just got to be heartbreaking for him to put in that much effort. All right, so in a 31-17 game led by UC, Miami goes all in. They get nothing. 12-32 to go in the fourth quarter. First to 10 for the Bearcats inside their own one-yard line. To our left. Then Bryant right up to the line for the snap. Got a receiver to his right. Man behind him in the backfield on the pistol formation. Bryant just a quarterback sneak here to try to get some more room. He's going to gain about a yard on it. Out to the two-yard line. Going to be a second down and nine coming up for the Bearcats. Smart call there by UC just to get Bryant out away from the shadow of his own end zone. Really, he's, he still is in the shadow of his own end zone at the two, but less than inside the one. Right. Yeah, and if you're Cincinnati here, the one thing you cannot do is give up a safety. So that little QB sneak there makes that a little bit less likely. Yep. From the shotgun, Brian works from his own end zone. Red Hawks, not a whole lot of pressure. Pass over the middle, it's tipped! And almost intercepted! Almost intercepted by Salopec. Almost intercepted off the tips of his fingers at the five-yard line. That maybe would have been a pick six. Oh, oh my goodness. Over the middle, a little inside pass, tipped off the receiver's arms. The receiver was number 10 in McClellan. Salopec had it served up on a silver platter. And the umpire got in his way. Salopec went for that ball and bumped into the umpire. The umpire wasn't standing there. It probably would have settled right into Salopec's arms, but you know, the referees are going, the officials are going to be on the field. You can't really say too much about that. Third and nine for UC, you can't at all. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Play clock reads three for Brian. He has no really desire to get this play off. They're gonna call a timeout. Well, it's a little bit of confusion maybe for UC on offense there. Brian, no urgency when the play clock was in its final seconds. It's 11.45 to go in the fourth. Gonna be timeout used by UC, the first one they use of the half. And a third down and nine is coming up for the Bearcats. Pass over the middle, wide open on that last play was Charles McClellan, and it got tipped off his fingers and dropped to the turf. Couldn't have been any easier for him, but that's the game of football, and you get UC Pitt now to a third and nine, down to their own two yard line or so. Media timeout, let's keep it here with 11.51 to go in the fourth quarter, and the 126th edition of the battle for the victory bell. I don't blame Chuck Martin at all for going all or nothing there because the field goal really does not help you in this game. You got to go for the touchdown down by 14 in the fourth quarter, and I think that's a smart play call. Get a really good effort from your quarterback playing his sixth career college game, who almost gets there, but it falls short. Move on if you're Miami. I don't think that's a bad call at all from Chuck Martin. Yeah, I agree. You think about it, you're sitting here in the fourth quarter, like you said, what's really the difference between a 10-point game and a 14-point game? You huh? still need yeah. to score two touchdowns at that point. And then you go back at it where if you don't get it, you have Cincinnati backed up inside of their two-yard line. And in that case, it was inside the one-yard line. Right. And that almost almost worked out really well for the Red Hawks. As we saw, Brian tries to force a throw there off somebody's fingertips and almost picked off. but. 
if you're the Red Hawks, you just got to try and hold them here and make them punt that ball right back to you. So you see is it's a good position here, but still plenty of football left to be played. We are just past three minutes into this fourth quarter. 31-17, UC leads the football game. Bearcat team picked to finish second in the AAC preseason poll. Of course, they've won the conference the last couple of years. They beat Houston in the AAC championship game last season at Nippert Stadium. Eventually, of course, we all know went on to lose in the playoff semifinal to Alabama at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Won the AAC Championship versus Tulsa in 2020, but then went to the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, lost to Georgia by three points at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta that year. And you know what? It's going to be a really big-time game next week when the Bearcats team hosts the Hoosiers of Indiana. It's going to be a 3.30 or 4 o'clock start at Nipper next week, and Indiana right now is on upset alert. They're down to Western Kentucky, 27 to 19, with 9.13 to go in the fourth quarter in Bloomington. Northwestern, Miami's opponent next week, is also down middle stages of the fourth quarter to Southern Illinois, 24 to 17. And you have both opponents for next week who should be taking care of business easily in their games, not doing so for each team. All right, now the time out, third and nine for UC. Ball is on their own two-yard line. Big chance for Miami. Still time to go. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Bryant shotgun stop at his own end zone. Looking to throw it over the middle. Time to work with. The throw, the catch is made to the 17-yard line. Clutch reception there is getting open with Tyler Scott. And the drive continues officially out to the 18-yard line of UC. Little throw to the right side on a broken play. Brian had all the time he needed to there to make the completion to the 18-yard line. Yeah, really kind of a backbreaker there for the Red Hawks. They had two opportunities on that first series with the uh, near interception and then a third and nine for the Bearcats. Weren't able to convert on either of them. Brian rolling over far side, a little bit of trouble. The pocket collapse. Red Hawks get to him and bring him down without a gain. On the first down and 10 play from his own 18-yard line, it'll be a second down. A tent coming up from the 18-yard line. Got an injured Red Hawk maybe down on the field in the backfield. They're going to blow the play dead for him. That's number 90 in red for the Red Hawks. On the field and Keenan Willard, the defensive lineman. A little bit shaken up as you had three Red Hawks in there making the tackle on Bryant and Willard that time. Maybe get a leg twisted or something. Slaying down on his back on the 15-yard line. Yeah, the way they're working on him right now, it looks like he has a cramp, All right. or he's cramping up. And Willard is really probably, at least through my eyes, been the most noticeable Red Hawk out there today. He's been in the backfield more than anybody else on that play right there. He was in the backfield again, and definitely will be credited with at least half of that sack. And you got to hope that it really just is a cramp, and he'll be right back out there for Miami because yep. they're having enough trouble as it is getting any pressure on Bryant. Take him off the field here. He's walking on his own power. Dr. Daly to his left. Well, looks like he will have to come out here, maybe sit a play, but hopefully we'll see Willard back out there for the game when it continues. Quick media timeout. We'll step aside for a little bit. 11 08 to go, fourth quarter. UC 31, Miami 17. Bearcats driving when we come back. And this is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio.
11 away to go in the fourth quarter. UC 31, Miami 17. We're back at Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati. Patrick Getsch and Jack Schmelzinger are with you. Appreciate you spending a part of your Saturday afternoon with us here on Red Hawk Radio. Two receivers to the left, two to the right for Ben Bryant. And it'll be a second down and 10 from his own 18-yard line. Bryant scrambling backward on the play. After getting the shotgun snap, flag comes out after he throws an incomplete pass. Well out of bounds on the far side, away on the UC sideline. Might be intentional grounding here. Oh no, it's a rough in the passer on Miami. Late hit on Bryant who was in trouble pretty much the entire play. Red Hawks had a blitz coming and then he threw it away the far sideline. We'll see on the replay. Salopec applied pressure, Ertl applied pressure. It was a kind of nasty contact up high for Miami's number eight, Brian Ungu, the defensive lineman. Yeah, kind of a tough break there for Miami. Bryant didn't even end up on the ground, but like you said, a little bit up high there for Ugu, and you got to realize that that's probably going to be called every time. Slant play, a catch, and a first down out near midfield is the receiver for UC on the first down and 10 play, and that was Josh Wiley out near midfield for the Bearcats, the 49-yard line with a reception. 10.45 to go, fourth quarter. Ball on the left hash here for UC. First down to 10 on their own 49-yard line. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left. Snap in the hands of Bryant. Going to throw far side. Quick completion on a little route ran by Charles McClellan. He's out of bounds with a gain of one or two yards. Looks like a second and nine is coming up. As he got to midfield, the 50-yard line. They're going to put the ball just past Bearcat territory on the Miami side of the 50, it looks like. Two receivers right, one to the left. Shotgun snap awaits Ben Bryant. First to 10, sorry, sorry, second to nine, right from the 50-yard line. Shotgun snap to Bryant, hands it off, rushing his way up the middle of the field. Miles Montgomery, the running back, gains really nothing on the play, maybe a yard or two. So to give him two yards, I guess, It'll be a third and seven coming up on the 48-yard line of Miami. You see officially now in Red Hawk territory. So, third and seven coming up. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for UC. Red Hawk defense getting set. 14 on the play clock. Miami's defense was never set. And a timeout called by Chuck Martin. Red Hawks were missing a part of their defensive line there and then a few safeties were kind of late to get into the party on the field and Chuck Martin calls timeout with a disorganized defense. First time all Miami uses on the second half of the game this afternoon with 9.33 to go in quarter number four and a UC lead of 31 to 17. Third down at seven is coming up for the Bearcats on the Red Hawk 48 yard line. As we have another media timeout here from Cincinnati, we'll keep it right here for that. So for you see next week, home against Indiana on Saturday. The Hoosiers come to town. That'll be a 3.30 or 4 o'clock kickoff. We'll find out in, I'm going to guess, hours what time that game kicks off. And then for Miami at Northwestern Saturday, 7.30 Eastern start from Evanston. And then after that, both teams going to conference play. Again, you see Saturday, October 1st at Tulsa. They they then host UCF the week after. Miami goes to Buffalo to play the Bulls on Saturday, October 1st. And then it's home against Kent State on October the 8th. So time now for conference play. Hard to believe. Turn to talk about it. Yeah, that's right. And coming into this game and even sitting here right now, it's easy to feel kind of down as you watch the Red Hawks uh, yep. begin to probably looking like they're going to lose their 16th straight victory bowl, but victory bell. But there is always conference play, and like we said last week, the ultimate goal of every season when you're a team like Miami is that conference championship. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to see the MAC schedule start up. Yep. You look at a Miami team that played today against, let's admit, better competition, better football team on paper in UC. And the effort Miami continues to show, the, the fight they continue to show, they know they're the underdog, they know they're not going to win every physical matchup. You look at Avion Smith today, sixth career college game, he's playing a team that went to the playoff last right. year, and look at the effort and the fight and the determination and the will in this team from him all the way down the board. If you're a Miami fan, it's really good to see that, especially this early in the year, and we talked about it at Kentucky too. 
Yeah, that's a really good point, Patrick. I mean, the Cincinnati defense is how many months removed? Six, eight right. months removed yep. from playing against Alabama and Bryce Young, last year's Heisman winner. And Avion Smith has put up a pretty decent showing against them. Like you said, it's been a good performance from him. He's had a lot of trouble just because his receivers are really not open downfield and he doesn't have a lot of time in the pocket, really not being set up well for success yep. by the rest of his teammates today. But like you said, pretty heartening performance from Avion Smith and the Red Hawks. Of course, not the exact same UC team from last year, but right. pretty close. Third down and seven is coming up for the Bearcats on the Red Hawk. 48 after the timeout, Chuck Martin used. Waiting for, I think, ESPNU to come back on the air before we get this going as both teams are lined up ready. Now we'll blow the play clock to roll. Two receivers to the right, two, one to the left, actually, for UC. Third and seven from the Red Hawk, 48 for the Bearcats. From the shotgun, Bryant claps once, snap is off, rolling near side of trouble. Bryant is brought down at the 35 yard line of UC. An explosive tackle and sack made by number 90 in red for Miami. That is Kanan Willard, who we remembered a little bit of trouble earlier on in this fourth quarter, but he wraps around number six in white in Bryant. And you see fourth and 23 on their own 37 yard line. Now the punt team is on for the Bearcats. He's done a really good job to get pressure on Bryant in certain parts of the game and bring him down. Yeah, Willard has looked really, really good today, and personally, I didn't really notice him much through the first two, but he's been in the backfield more than any other Red Hawk so far today. That's four plays, I remember, where he put big prime pressure on Bryant. First sack, though. And over and kick from Fletcher. Walker trying to return it, only gets about five yards near side of the field, deep in his own territory to the, looks like, 20-yard line. They'll give him, made the grab at the 15, got to about the 20, and that is where they're gonna mark him out of bounds on the near side of the field. Again, another media timeout. We'll step aside for it real quick here for Paycor Stadium. 8.38 to go in the fourth. Red Hawks going to drive. But we come back. They trail by 14 to Cincinnati. Can some late heroics maybe save Miami here at Paycor Stadium? We'll find out in a moment. This is Miami Football on Red Hawk Radio. Eight thirty-eight to go here, quarter number four. Miami's got the ball back. They trail by two scores. Some late heroics potentially in the works for Avion Smith and the Red Hawks as they will take over from their own 20-yard line in just a bit. Stay tuned. We'll have full post-game coverage, recap scores from around the Mid-American Conference and around the country, as well as a preview of next week's matchup between Miami and Northwestern. That all coming up on our Red Hawk Radio post-game in just a few minutes' time. For now, we send it back to Patrick Geshen and Jack Schmelzinger with the call of our final eight and change. Red Hawks with a chance here late. Thank you very much, Luke. Looking forward to that. 31-17, of course, is the score. You get a first and 10 coming up for Miami on their own 20-yard line here to get this drive going. And Jack, 
We get that eight minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock. You think Miami is getting the crunch time here. Red Hawks need to put some points on the board rather quickly. Yeah, and we've said it uh, at the start of the last couple Miami drives, but looking at the scoreboard right now, the Red Hawks really are not out of it. This game yep. is still within reach for Miami. They're going to need to put some points up on the board quickly. Like you said, though, we'll see what Avion Smith can do here with this drive. Two receivers to the right and one to the left as the media timeout wraps up here from Paycor Stadium. 126th edition of the second oldest rivalry in the FBS. Battle for the victory bell. From the shotgun, Smith works. First to 10 from his own 20-yard line. 15 on the play clock. Gets the snap off. Hand off to Kenny Tracy. Arcing his way to the right side of the field. Gains a couple of yards on the play. Going to be a second down and eight coming up for Miami. Toward the middle of the field went the rush for Kenny Tracy, number 33 in red on the carry for the Red Hawks. Clock will become a factor for Miami. 8-10 to go in the fourth and is moving. Second down and eight, two receivers right, one to the left. Klapnik twice is Smith from the shotgun over the middle. There's the throw nearly intercepted. Almost brought down by number 13 in white for UC. That would have been the linebacker, Tyman Fawcett. Served up kind of on a silver platter for him. Incomplete third and eight coming up for Miami with 8.02 left in the fourth quarter of the game. Miami looking to better their one for nine third down efficiency mark so far in this game. It's a little bit of a tough task here down inside their own 25 with a third and long. Yep. Two receivers to the right. One to the left. You got Smith back with a shotgun snap with eight on the play clock. Man who's left in the backfield is Keon Mosey. Aaron Hawks need eight for the first down. Shotgun snap, backfield empties out. Smith underneath pass, back hit a pivot hammer. Plenty of speed out to the 33. He needed the 35. They're going to give him the 34. It looks like out of bounds a yard shy of the first. On that far sideline, he was wrapped up out of bounds. Be a fourth and one for Miami coming up. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and one. Two receivers. Or one receiver rather to the left. You get a flag of the play. Legal substitution on Miami. You had all kinds of personnel stuff going on there. People running off the field. People running on the field. On their near sideline of the kind of deep to our right territory. And so it's going to be a fourth and one. Turns into a fourth and six for Miami. Ball brought back to the 24-yard line of their own. Emion Smith still out there. And now we got a few personnel changes again, but no punt team is on. Looks like Chuck Martin is going to pretty much go for the game here. Interesting. 7.20 to go, fourth quarter. Smith and company going to go for this fourth and six. First fourth down Miami is attempted of the day. Ball is on the 24. Beg your pardon, their second one. They're 0 for 1 today on fourth downs. Two receivers left, one to the right. Smith back to throw. Looking far side, gets the pass off. That is almost intercepted. Deep into the midfield area. Number 10 almost got his hands on it there for UC. And Brian threats the safety. Bearcats going to take over here on down. It's going to be first and 10 for UC. Inside the red zone on the Miami 19-yard line. Just a pass play there to the far side. Smith had one option. That was hip and hammer over there. The you see sideline of the field, but well overthrown by a good five, six yards. And first attempt for the Bearcats coming up. Thank your pardon on the 24 yard line of Miami comes UC. Receiver here on either side, shot could stop. Bryant still out there with his offense, leading by 14 points. And off to McClellan, gets his way down to the 20. On the carry there for four or five yards, down to the 19 yard line. They will officially mark it down. Second and five is coming up as you see into the red zone. A lot of the student sections have left or are starting to leave. Yeah, it looks like the Miami one was kind of largely intact before that last play, but really starting to clear out now. Right. A lot of people filing toward the exits. Cincinnati student section was already a little bit dwindling before that. 
Bryant hands off from the shotgun. Going to be rushed by McClellan down to the 15-yard line. He'll be about a yard short of the first down. Third and one or so is coming up for UC. Taking their sweet old time here. Just eating up clock. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It's running. 31 to 17, the lead for Cincinnati over Miami. Receiver on either side here for Bryant. Gets the snap off, hands it off, and up the middle to the end zone for the touchdown, Charles McClellan. Touchdown rush for Charles McClellan. Kind of broke his way through the Red Hawk line, had an easy path to the end zone. And with 5.33 to go in the fourth quarter, Cincinnati takes a 20-point lead, barring the PAT, 37-17. BAT try on is co for UC. Perfect on the day, perfect on the season. He will remain that way as Coe knocks it right through on the point after attempt. And the Bearcats take a 21 point lead over the Miami Red Hawks, 38 to 17. Your score, 5.33 to go in the quarter. As he had the touchdown rush there. And a good one from Charles McClellan. Broke a few tackles early on in it from a couple of Red Hawk linemen. And found his way to the end zone for the touchdown. Five thirty-three remains in the fourth quarter. Three play, 24 yard drive for UC that lasted a little over two minutes of time. Luke Fickle, by the way, with a win today, could tie for second most in UC program history with Sid Gilman. Fickle would have 50 wins today if UC were to hold on in this game. And how many years has he been there? His sixth season right now. It's pretty impressive. So I mean, be, obviously, right. Luke Fickle is impressive. Right. You get Fickle 50 wins in six seasons, not even six seasons, and he would be three away from the program record of 53 wins by a head coach set by Rick Minter for the Bearcats. Get caught by UC, goes out the back of the Miami end zone, and so it'll be first to 10 for the Red Hawks from their own 25 yard line, 5.33 to go in the fourth quarter. I get a feeling we won't be really seeing Luke Fickle around in these battle for the victory ball games a whole lot anymore beyond a few years. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he ultimately ends up. I mean, really, like, the sky is the limit for this right. guy. I mean. You start to think about the jobs that might come open in the next five, ten years. I mean, is this guy, what job? I feel like every job, or Luke Fickle is too big for like every job. Like maybe once Nick Saban retires at Alabama or <laughs> something like that. Wrapped up on the play, first to ten for the 25 yard line goes the Miami rusher, Kenny Tracy. Lose about a yard here, back to his own 24. Gonna be a second and 11 from there coming up. Yeah, you don't know. Could have really gone anywhere he wanted to in terms of vacancies last offseason. Kind of decided to just stay put. Keep building what he has done here at Cincinnati. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left for Miami. I mean, second and 11 from their own 24 yard line. Ball on the left hash. Smith, pocket collapses, running far side, brought down at the 20. No options down the field. That's been the theme all day long for UC. In terms of their defense of Miami's pass game, number six on the sack for the Bearcats, J.Q. Hardaway, the defensive back. So you get a third and 15 if you're the Red Hawks, who are one for 10 on third downs today. Ball is on their own 20 yard line. Two receivers left and one to the right. 
Shotgun stop, Smith, almost interception there. It was kind of a throw underneath that just went well off. Number 97 almost made the play for UC. And Eric Phillips, the defensive lineman, just over his head. Smith threw it right to him. Red Hawks score three and out on the try. Fourth and 15 coming up. Miami with the ball on their own 20 yard line. And Juleman is on a punt and away. He will send it down the field inside the 40 yard line of the Bearcats. Standing is their returner, number 20. And Gene and Thompson. Well, the good thing is we'll get to see Tom Jobin, maybe Miami's best performer today, show off his leg once again. Yep. Kick off the right foot of Jobin over midfield, and it will be a catch and drop by Thompson. Regains control, though, back at the 30-yard line of his own. And that's where the drive here will begin. For you see officially at the 31, Thompson just a clean drop there on the catch for the return. Red Hawks cannot get to it. Thompson regaining control with 3.53 to go in quarter number four. Luke, I know you're going to have an out-of-town scoreboard update coming soon on our post-game show, but you got a big one, big update here as we switch possessions. How about the Salukis, Patrick? Southern Illinois knocks off Northwestern. Miami's opponent next week falls to one and two, 31-24 the final in that one. And how about the FCS upsets we've seen this year? Southern Illinois continuing the trend against a power five opponent in the Wildcats. That's why this sport is so cool. You never know. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. We're seeing Evan Prater now at quarterback for UC. Throws a quick play to the near side. There's a pass and a catch out past the 35-yard line. Who's number 18 in white on the grab for the Bearcats. New receiver target. We haven't seen a whole lot today. Shimon Mateo, the tight end. So Evan Prater in at quarterback. This guy's the future once Bryant leaves. He's a Cincinnati guy, redshirt sophomore from Wyoming High School, was Mr. Football in Ohio in 2019. Recruited by his hometown team as UC is called for an ineligible receiver downfield, so they're going to have to go back five yards in the play. Prater did come into the game last week against Kennesaw State, went four for four, threw for 92 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. This guy's the next kind of big time quarterback that's going to be at UC and a local kid at that as well. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff that I was reading about Cincinnati uh, during the preseason was saying that this guy, you know, people thought that this guy kind of had the starting job locked up, and Ben Bryant came in and took the reins, but definitely interesting to get to see a little bit of Evan Prater here. Right. All start coming here, a flag thrown against the Bearcats on first down at 15 from their own 26, going to push it back to their own 21-yard line. First and 20 is upcoming as most of the crowd starting to file out of Paycor Stadium. Remember the last time these two teams played here was four years ago, and it was pouring down rain. Only about 10,000 people made it to the game <laughs> that night. This time, much better weather. We were part of the cloudy mid-80s today in Cincinnati downtown, and a good 30,000 came out for it. We're expecting to guess in terms of the attendance numbers. You have more pre-snap flags coming out before the first at 20 for UC. Another false start against the Bearcats. <laughs> and a rough here for Evan Prater. He's trying to show what he can do to the UC fan base here. Yeah, What's really coming? Not, not a great look. You're, uh, yeah. First play from scrimmage gets delayed three times for pre-snap penalties. Definitely not the way Evan Prater likely envisioned his afternoon beginning. <laughs> from the 16-yard line, first down to 25 for the UC. And off Prater goes to a running back up the middle, only gains two or three on the rush. I'm sure that's it for the Bearcats coming out of the pile. Maybe that was number 26. Yeah, it was Miles Montgomery on the rush. Redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. He's had 108 yards on the ground coming into the game here today this season. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, 2.13 to go, fourth quarter. 38-17, the Bearcat lead from the shotgun. Prater with a man who's right in the backfield. We have play action, Prater rolling near side to the 15-20, tackle down the 23-yard line. Good little rush on the keep for Prater. You know, have a third down coming here in about 18 for UC on their own 
23 yard line. 145 to go fourth quarter. Looks like the victory bell will stay with the Bearcats for a 16th straight year and UC's gonna take the all-time series lead. 60, 59, and seven. First time they'll get the lead in the series since 1915, over 107 years ago. Shotgun snap to Prater on third down and 18 in Bearcat territory. He's gonna run his way. Evan Prater through all the Red Hawk defenders. He's got a first down on the ground to the 43 yard line, but a flag is thrown on the near side of the field near the Miami sideline. That guy can run. Holding on UC. So never mind on the Prater rush. Your point still stands though, he, he really can run. Right. That was an impressive rush from Evan Prater. Kind of looked like Lamar Jackson out there, just the way that he was cutting, dodging and weaving, changing direction so quickly. Spinning, twirling, yeah. pirouetting over all the red uniforms out to get him. One oh five to go in the fourth quarter. Clock moving. Third and thirteen for UC from their own twenty-eight yard line. Prater from the shotgun. Pair of receivers on either side. Claps once. Snap into his hands. Back to the nineteen to throw it inside underneath pass and trip down at the thirty. Miles Montgomery. Really good tackle there for Miami's number three in red, who made the play for the Red Hawks. That was the defensive back in Nolan Johnson. And a fourth down to 13 coming up for the Bearcats. Inside 35 seconds left in this fourth quarter. They're going to punt it away, I guess. They have to. This play clock reads 20, and there's 27 on the game clock. So here we go with Miles or Mason Fletcher, the punter for UC. Sophomore from Melbourne, Australia. Mentioned his Australian ties. Dad played pro football in the Continent. Two on the play clock. You see he's going to take a delay game here, I think. Nope, they're going to call a timeout. They were all lined up ready to go. And you, Luke Fickle will just call a timeout here. And six seconds to go in the fourth quarter. They had the official on the far side there call a timeout. And then the referee threw the flag for delay game. So it is going to be a timeout for UC. A little miscommunication there from the stripes. I just can't believe they didn't milk this one for another uh, media timeout and a few more minutes of commercials. Yeah, with six seconds to go. Punt formation, six seconds left. Clock is stopped. Red Hawks will get the ball. Fletcher sends it away with a right foot, end over end kick. It is caught by Walker at his own 20 yard line. The clock reads zero in the fourth quarter, and that's going to do it for Paycor Stadium this afternoon. UC holds on to the victory belt for the 16th straight season. They take the all time series lead 60 59 at 7 over the Miami Red Hawks, thanks to a 38 17 win over Miami this afternoon at Paycor Stadium in downtown Cincinnati, Ohio. Chuck Martin and Luke Fickle will give each other a hug on the Orange Bengals B at midfield. Each team congratulating themselves, hugging each other, saying good game. They're at midfield. It is a pretty intense rivalry, but a lot of these guys know each other. Of course, you got a lot of Southwest Ohio natives on either team. So you get plenty of camaraderie among both groups. This game too kind of special. You see a lot of people in the stands sitting next to each other. One person's got a Miami shirt on, the other guy's got a UC jersey on next to him. Pretty cool how it is a rivalry, but everybody does come together in the end. As the Red Hawks exit the field to our left here at Paycor Stadium, their record falls this season to one and two. UC improves to two and one. Bearcats now with the all-time series lead. Like we mentioned, 60-59 at seven. And the battle for the victory bell was Miami. Falls to UC for the 16th straight time. And UC, of course, the first lead in the series in seven years. Or the first lead in the series, I'm sorry, since 1915 in 107 years. Got to add 100 to that total. Wow. Beg your pardon. Since 1915, UC has not had a lead in the series. 
as they get the victory bell here this afternoon at Paycor Stadium. Your final thoughts, Jack? It was a it was an interesting game, a decent game from the Red Hawks, I thought. They took advantage of some UC mistakes early in this one and then the game kind of got away from them, especially in that second half. But yep. they hung around, and the game was not over until, I don't know, probably six or seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. So they really did hang around almost all game. And their offense couldn't get a ton going, but the defense held decently strong. And, you know, it's a non-conference uh, battle against a really tough opponent. They'll go into Northwestern next week and hope to do a little better. That they will. Red Hawks off to Evanston next weekend for a matchup with the Big Tens. Northwestern Wildcats. We'll break it down a little bit more in just a moment on the postgame show. Jack and I will be back, but first we send it over to Luke Westpoli, who gets it rolling. Luke. Patrick, thanks very much. Miami Falls on this Saturday, 38-17, the final against the UC Bearcats here at Paycor. As Cincinnati claims their 16th straight victory bell, and they will celebrate and give it a ring on the center B here at Paycor Stadium. Well, let's break down how it happened. This was a very fun one throughout on both sides. Miami got started right away. As we mentioned, they go seven plays, 75 yards to start things off after winning the toss, electing to receive, and the Red Hawks march down the field and are able to punch it into the end zone after a really nice throw and catch between Avion Smith and Mac Hippenhammer as the Red Hawks would take a lead. They would then force a fumble on the ensuing drive on Cincinnati's 40-yard line. That would result in a field goal from Graham Nicholson as the Red Hawks would take a 10-0 lead. UC responds with a touchdown of their own. And after a punt from the Red Hawks, UC would fumble again for the second time before Miami was able to punch it into the end zone and take a 17-7 lead. After that, though, it was, for the most part, all UC. They would score to make it a three-point game and then tie it up just one drive later. And then a couple of punts followed by an interception that the Red Hawks threw that really killed the momentum late in that first half. UC would take a lead into the break as they would run the two-minute drill and find the end zone late in the first half. They would go into the break up 24 to 17. In the second half, it was all UC as they came out and they were able to score on their second drive to extend their lead to two scores. Miami had a chance later on in this one to cut it to one score. After forcing a stop, they were able to get the ball all the way down to the UC one, but a couple of plays and a goal line stand from the Bearcats, and they held Miami out of the end zone. Game was not over at that point. Miami had a chance to keep UC pinned in their own end, nearly had an interception inside the five yard line that would have given the Red Hawks the ball right back with a chance to cut the lead to one score once again. But instead, UC able to make a couple of clutch plays and convert some key third downs late in the game as they would eventually extend the lead out a little more with another touchdown to the eventual final 38-17 is how it ended. Miami falls to one and two. They will head to Northwestern next weekend in Evanston, Saturday night, prime time on Big Ten Network to take on the Wildcats. And for UC, they will be back in action at home at Nippert Stadium as the raucous crowd, as always, will get to see what has been a really good non-conference matchup over the past few years between UC and the Indiana Hoosiers. Take a look at the scores from around the Mid-American Conference. This is the first game that has gone final this afternoon between Miami and UC. Buffalo right now leading Coastal Carolina. That game in Conway as the Bulls lead 19 to 14 in the later goings of the third quarter. Central Michigan on top of Bucknell from Mount Pleasant, 27 nothing the score there. Ohio trailing Iowa State, 24 to three the score just prior to halftime. At the halftime break, Ball State leads Murray State 14 to nothing. All deadlocked at zero, just a few minutes in, into Cal, as Northern Illinois does battle with Vanderbilt as the Commodores are driving, looking to take a lead with the ball in the red zone for the first time that afternoon. That game televised on CBS Sports Network. In a little over an hour, Marshall, fresh off their win over Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame, will take on Bowling Green. Once again, a 5 o'clock start in just over an hour on NFL Network from Doytel Perry Stadium in Bowling Green. Toledo at seven o'clock will take on Ohio State. Third ranked Buckeyes playing host to the Rockets in what has been a very one-sided non-conference series over the past few meetings. Akron heads to Tennessee on SEC Network Plus. That will start at 7 p.m. 
Also Pitt, 23rd team in the nation, visiting Kalamazoo to take on Western Michigan in the 7.30 start on ESPNU. Eastern Michigan takes on Arizona State. That will be an 11 o'clock start on the Pac-12 network from Sun Devil Stadium. And also should mention one more game has gone final in the MAC as Kent State knocks off Long Island with ease. Golden Flashes pick up their first win of the year. 63 to 10 is the final from Northeast Ohio. So we'll take the chance now to bring back our broadcast crew in the booth here. Jack Schmelzinger, Patrick Geshen return to the broadcast. And guys, this was entertaining especially throughout the first two and a half quarters you could say of this game it seemed like the Red Hawks really had everything going right for them the effort was there especially in that first quarter and even when it didn't seem like the Red Hawks were firing on all cylinders some of the bounces kind of went their way in that first half that allowed them to go into the break only down a touchdown but in the second half we see why UC is as highly touted as they are the talent seems to usually come through and it certainly did tonight yeah it sure did and at times, it really just looked like the Red Hawks were physically outmatched, and it makes sense because the boon of this UC program is really their recruiting. They do such a good job in Ohio, like we were talking about on last week's post game, and they just, you know, they have better athletes on their team than Miami does, bigger guys. And for Miami, it was just kind of a setup to fail from the beginning, and they did a decent job hanging in there. But like you said, Luke, just physically outmatched at times by some more just higher caliber athletes. Yeah, you see, we mentioned how much that offense can just eat up yards, 478 yards of total offense for a team that continues to just average right up on that 500 mark through three weeks. Really remarkable what this team is able to do, Patrick, not only on the ground, but through the air as well. We saw a couple of quarterbacks thought that Ben Bryan looked really good. And yep. yeah, it's just... There's so many weapons on this UC team, and we saw them just utilized in full force. You got multiple options, deep threats and wideouts. You got guys in the backfield. You look at local guys like Corey Kiner who transferred in, and this UC team is just so, so deep offensively, and that very evident on the stat sheet this afternoon. Very, very evident, and you just uh, back to the recruiting. I mean, they do it the right way. They bring in local guys, local talented guys, and you have guys around the country country as well. I mean, Bryant's from LaGrange, Illinois. You got, you know, people like Jaden Thompson from Chicago. You got Trey Tucker's out of Akron, so that's not too far away. And then, of course, we talked about the local guys, right? Wiley's from LaSalle High School. You got Prater, your future QB from Wyoming. Kiner's from Roger Bacon, like you said. You got a kid, Brian Montgomery, who uh, did not appear beyond week one of the season, but he's going to probably come back in the lineup from Franklin, Ohio, which is not too far away. Um, yeah, I mean, they do it the right way, and, and we've talked about it a lot. This is a, a program that's a model for others around the country from a mid-major conference, a high-level mid-major conference, and what they've been able to do, what they've been able to do, the money they've been able to pour into their facilities, their coaches, their recruiting. They're doing it the right way. They're building it from the ground up the right way, and you can see a really excited fan base too. Obviously a bigger school. It's a bigger market. You're going to be able to generate more excitement out of your team because you have a whole city of 300,000 people right in your backyard. So you're going to generate that kind of excitement rather than a Miami team that's kind of in a more remote place. That makes sense. But you see that's that's just using the resources they have to their advantage. And, um, you know, this is kind of what's going on in college football now. you got a team like UC that is trending upward on the charts, a team like Miami that isn't necessarily going down as a program. In fact, they're improving every year, you could argue, within the last few years. Um, and UC is just the better the better team all over the, the field. Yeah, and you look at some of these recruits, and it's really interesting looking up and down this UC card of their lineup and where these guys went to high school. I mean, it is almost like a list. You right. could show where these guys went to high school in an unlabeled list, and maybe someone would think these are just all the good high school football teams in the Cincinnati area, and that's where UC recruits from. I mean, you see – Mason, Middletown, both Lakotas, you got Anderson, you got all the GCL South teams represented in LaSalle, X, Moeller, and Elder, and you've got guys from some of the smaller schools as well. You look at Franklin and, you know, Division Five powerhouse like Wyoming, and this C UC team just has done such a great job in dominating this area. We referenced it on the postgame show last week in previewing this matchup as Luke Fickle came in. He was the interim at Ohio State for a little bit, and he yep. came into a Cincinnati area and a Cincinnati team where, like you mentioned, Patrick, their facilities were average. They were a group of five team that was 
good but not great. This, this game was competitive every year. Yeah. I mean, that's what it came I mean, down to. They were a true group of five team, and they, they looked very similar to what Miami is right now. You know, you're a team that was good in your conference. Mm -hmm. You could go in and play competitive games every so often in your non-conference with maybe some power five opponents, but they weren't a team that was going to make a college football playoff. I mean, who are we, are we kidding ourselves that that was not the place where UC was? And Luke Fickle came in and he turned this from Ohio State country in Southwest Ohio to UC country. I mean, this is a Bearcat fan base now. It used to be that Ohio State owned this entire state. If you were good from Ohio, you, came, well, you went to Ohio State as a recruit. Now, if you're from the Cincinnati area and you've got to pick between two schools, we're seeing guys go to UC and it's really, uh, you know, telling of the job that he's done, but also you, you see it on the field. I mean, we, we know how good Ohio State is. Nobody needs to talk about that. We see how good they are every year. And so you take those caliber of recruits and all of a sudden you move them to a completely different school, that school is going to make their way up to be just as competitive as well, and that's exactly what UC has done. Really, really impressive. This is model coaching. I truly think Luke Fickle is at least top five. I think he might be the best recruiter in the country in Division I. Uh, what he's done is just unreal, really, in taking this team to the heights that he has. And, you know, they've dominated this series, but it's well-deserved. It's not a thing where it's been a stroke of luck where – you know, you don't win 16 games in a row that way. You win 16 games in a row off the type of culture and the type of team that they've built. And I think that you just look up and down everyone in that UC program from Fickle all the way across the board as well. And you're just really impressed by what you see at UC. I mean, think about also everything else that's happened that's not necessarily on a football field or on the recruiting trail. We talked about the facilities, but how about the job was done by the UC Athletic Department in marketing this team out to not only the city of Cincinnati, but the student body as well, because think about what we see at Nippert Stadium every week. That's one of the best atmospheres in the group of five in college football. Last week, UC couldn't do anything right, and now you're just praising them. I think it's funny. <laughs> I, That's why I laughed at No, it's, no, I, no you're, you're totally right. I mean, look, you see it by the crowd that came out today, right? This is a really accessible game for anybody that wants to come, Miami or UC fan that lives in Southwest Ohio. And you had a 65 to 70 percent crowd that favored UC. Miami's fans were in one specific section of the, the stadium, <laughs> below us, lower bowl. That's where the Miami tickets were. You had Bearcat people sitting all around this place, below us, on the other side of the field, to our right, to our left. So it shows you. I mean, Class A, right? Class A. And and back to the recruiting. Luke Fick was at the St. X Moeller game last night. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, and he was recruiting. You I mean, were playing he a noon game, right? I mean, he's probably he's twelve hours or less removed from having to be here this morning, and he's out at a high school football game doing I mean, recruiting. He is just he's really devoted like his entire life to this program, and I think he's done a good job. But yeah, I mean, he works so 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 hard, and you can see it based off just where he does and what he. Uh, you know, where he goes and what he's been able to do. But, yeah, I mean, it's just the little things like that. Yeah. Other coaches don't think about, do you want to, you know, stay at the team hotel and be with your guys? Or do you say, you know what, that's what assistant coaches are for. We're going to let them run all the team meetings, and I'm going to go out and try to build our program for the future. I mean, it's almost outside of the box in a way to do something like that. But when you think about it from that kind of perspective that you see as a team that is basically bank their entire program on being able to dominate this area recruiting wise I think it makes perfect sense and it was a really good job done by him last night it was a big deal he was there with Zach Taylor as well head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals and it was a lot of fun at that game yesterday and could be seeing a lot of guys playing in that game eventually playing for UC now because that game I mean that's the Miami UC type of rivalry for those two teams and when you're a high school player and you're playing your chief rival in the biggest game of the year, and you've got a coach who says, hey, I'm going to come and watch you play instead of, you know, hanging back at my house and doing whatever it is I'm going to do instead. I think that really gives you a good idea of how players feel and how they want to play for him. And so yep. really interested to see that that was the case last night that he went there, but makes sense. Yeah, and just going back to what you were saying about Ohio State earlier, just the fact that he was able to insert himself and his program into this state while Ohio State has really remained at the top of the college football world. I mean, they've been one of the best five teams in the entire country pretty much the entire time that UC has seen this meteoric just shooting straight to the top. 
And, I mean, if you go back to Miami 40 minutes away, it's completely Ohio State country. Everyone there is an Ohio State fan. So, really, Luke Fickle has just kind of created this little hamlet here in Cincinnati where he's pulling the best players and from the area, and it's just, like you guys were saying, really impressive stuff. Absolutely. And, I, I mean, the results are on the field. We saw it last year, and I think we'll see it this year as well. And so... Let's switch things over to the Red Hawks. we got a preview, a matchup coming up next week. We're hoping we get to cover it. we still got some details to work out. We don't know. But as if we're going to cover the game next week, Miami has a Northwestern team that just <laughs> lost to FCS Southern Illinois today. They lost to Duke two weeks ago. Coming out of week one, this was a team that beat Nebraska, and that was before everything went wrong at Nebraska. People were thinking that this team was going to come in and be pretty good, and all of a sudden Northwestern beats them in week one. There's some hype generated, and then they lose two games against one of the weaker teams in the Power Five in Duke at home and now an FCS opponent. But safe to say there's going to be a lot of adjustments from that Northwestern team, and you really got to think that they're going to be coming out firing next Saturday. Something's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard uh, earlier today there was a fight between two security guards. I think we might be having another one down below us. Interesting. My goodness. wonder if my dad's listening. He, uh, he runs security at a couple of hospitals in the area. He would love to hear that story. And I'm sure he could contribute a few similar ones of his own. <laughs> many, many similar ones. <laughs> so back to your point. What do yeah. you say to again? I mean, Miami's got to play Northwestern, who's coming yeah. off two really, really bad losses, if we're being totally honest. And... We don't know what kind of game we're going to see from the Redhawks. It's been three really different opponents, and so it's kind of hard to gauge what that's going to look like for Miami. But for their opponent, they're going to be very, very hungry to pick yes. up a win in their final non-conference game. And if you're Chuck Martin and that staff, that's a scary place to go into, knowing how much expectation rides on the other team going into that game next Saturday night. You know, I that's a really good point, and I, and I agree they're going to be a really hungry team, but I think Chuck Barton, in these first four games of the year, if you listen to him talk and you listen to him, you know, you know discuss the opponents and, and, and the, the games on paper, I don't think he's really super focused on the opponent every single week. I mean, obviously Miami prepares. They learn their opponent. They do everything they should do to, to get ready for a game. But I think he's really more concerned about how his team performs on stages like this, and that's going to determine how you perform on stages, you know, going the rest of the year when you go into MAC play. Um, you know, you listened to his press conference last week. He was really more worried about how his team responded on this stage. He was more worried about at Kentucky how his team responded on that stage. So I think for Chuck Martin, the the emphasis next week is going to be, okay, we take that into account. We know that Northwestern is a hungry team know what what the history is with that program we're going to prepare but we you know we all we also want to see how our team performs on that stage we also want to see how our guys respond to the hungriness of northwestern um that to me is going to be the bigger focus for chuck martin next week but you're right it's going to be a hungry team it's going to be a good matchup maybe miami can compete in it like they have competed against kentucky now they've competed against cincinnati for an entire half of a game you never know yeah, and I think it's pretty safe to say that Northwestern is not quite as good as Kentucky or Cincinnati. And like you were saying, Patrick, just test after test for this young Red Hawk team so far in this season. Like you said, they started off in SEC country, had a game against Robert Morris. It's not really a part of that. But then they come here, play in the Bengals Stadium against Cincinnati, probably the biggest rivalry game of the year, actually, definitely. And then next week they have to travel eight hours up to Chicago to play against another Power 5 opponent. I mean, that's the type of stuff that, you know, your team gets used to playing on the big stage, and then once, you know, December rolls around and maybe you have a chance to go to Detroit, you know, your team's well prepared because of things that happened earlier in the season. I think he has a, there's a lot of logic there. I mean, that's a really good point, yeah. and, and, and Chuck knows what he's doing. He knows that his team might probably not beat Cincinnati, but it's going to make his football team better, and I mm. think we saw a much – better football team tonight or today than we saw in week two than we saw in week one a team that I mean I'm blown away by Aviat Smith today I, I think yeah. if you're a Miami football fan and you know that Gabbert's out and you got Smith the rest of the year you are so elated right now with how your quarterback played the athleticism he showed he was throwing good passes he was rushing the ball well just the pure effort the effort he put into so many plays today this guy's a real deal. I mean, and he's he's a redshirt freshman in his sixth career game. He's facing a team that was in the playoff last yeah. year. 
This guy's a real deal, and you got to be really excited for Miami moving forward, knowing that this guy could play football at a high level. Yeah. Right, six career. Sorry, Luke, but no, you're all good. Six career games, second career start, and first career start against an FBS opponent, and it was against, like you said, a team that played Alabama eight months ago, a team that was in the playoff, and it's at the Bengals Stadium, probably the biggest stage, maybe one of the biggest stages he'll face in his entire career today. And he really did perform pretty well. Yeah, and I think teeing off both of your points, you look at some of the plays that Smith made today, and the word gutsy comes to mind for me, but it's just, it's so high effort for Smith, and I've been really, really impressed. I mean, even you look at the fourth down play where the Red Hawks, they weren't even able to get into the end zone when they had the ball on the one-yard right. line, but Smith is back in the backfield taking a snap, and he's five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's toast. He's got three white jerseys around him. And somehow he fights his way back up to the line of scrimmage, and he's lunging forward knowing he's probably going to get lit up trying to reach that ball towards the end zone. And even though he didn't get there, you can tell that the effort is there. And I think going off your point from a little earlier on, Patrick, you talked about the preparation and Coach Martin not really caring about the opponent. One thing, despite the two losses in the results against these really good teams we've seen for the Red Hawks this season, is they haven't seemed intimidated by any of their opponents at all. I think we've seen that based off the starts they've had in both of their games. And despite taking both the losses, I think there's a very big difference between taking losses and even taking losses by a large amount of points. You could say that this kind of got to that point towards the end of this game. But sometimes there are teams that will go in against a UC opponent like this, and they will be intimidated. And that's when you'll see them get beat somewhat of like we saw last week for UC and Kennesaw State, that's where you'll see those ridiculous scores where UC puts up 63 points and all of a sudden, you know, you lose by 50 plus. And I think that the Red Hawks have not really been intimidated to that point at all. And it's really been just kind of a talent disparity that we talked about that is winning the other teams these games and is losing the Red Hawks these games. And it's not really as much of a mindset thing. I think that the Red Hawks have been good, especially um, in their approach in these two big games that they've played this season against Kentucky and UC because they came ready. I mean, it wasn't a matter of readiness. It wasn't a matter of having a bad start and getting jumped on right away. They looked really good in the early goings. It's just very exhaustive to play against teams that are that good for that long, and that's kind of what we've seen as both opponents in the two really difficult games the Red Hawks have had in the three weeks have pulled away in the second half. Good point, and uh, yeah, but, but you got to be happy if you're a a Miami football fan. I mean, the effort, the determination, the will was there all throughout the game. Um, you know, and you put Miami against a, a team from the MAC with that kind of effort, with that kind of athleticism, with that kind of response to the stage, to the moment. This team's going to be really good in the yeah. conference this year. I mean, they're going to they're have a really good conference season, I think. Um, Absolutely. It's so good to see all these things coming out in the first three weeks of the season, you know, and just guys stepping up, next man up kind of mentality. And, and it's just so refreshing to see the amount of just good plays that were made today, the effort, the pride. They were ready from the start, you know, and, and that was really good to see. Yeah, definitely. It was really good to see, like you mentioned, the just plays that were made by the guys and the physicality down on the field. The Red Hawks did not shy away from any of that, and they did not seem to be scared of the opponent that they had to go up against. So, guys, Miami Falls in this one. They have a losing record officially now on the season at 1-2, and two, but a big chance to even that up And what we talked about, a potential trap game next week. We've seen pretty good performances from the Red Hawks despite their record in the first few games, and this is a team that shows a lot of promise. For each of you guys, final thoughts on this one, final thoughts moving forward towards that game next week. Going to be an exciting one. Um, just, just excited to see again how Miami will respond on a stage like that. Um, excited to see how this team improves from week three to week four. Excited to see how Avion Smith gets better from week three to week four. This is the last non-conference game, and it gets real after that. you got to play Buffalo the following week, and that's when it gets real for Miami. So last kind of preparation before you get into conference play. I mean, what team comes out and, and plays the game? Probably a team that's going to put in the effort, put in the determination. Um, so we'll see how they how they get better. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Like you were saying, Luke, this team has come out with hot starts in all three of their games so far, and I'm just excited for next week to see if they can last and outlast those Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah, absolutely. And 
we've seen that they can hang. It's just a matter of yeah. how long is that going to last. Like Jack said, we've seen it for two quarters now in a pair of games in which Miami's been the heavy underdog. Now probably less so of an underdog heading into next week. And I think some questions answered based off the performance from Avion Smith in the last couple of weeks. Red Hawks definitely going to have a chance to take a breath, you could say, after a little bit of anxiety and stress maybe that came from the injury to Brett Gabbard. But they're going to work with Smith moving forward. And you know what? I don't think the Red Hawks are going to be as disappointed as maybe they initially thought based off his performance the past couple of weeks. I think there's some confidence for this team moving forward into week four. And like you guys said, just really excited to see what kind of performance we get out of them next week in a very, very winnable game at Northwestern. That indeed. And uh, Bain and Golf did win, by the way. Bain so Golf won. We are one and nine, I think. Patrick Geshin, JV golf coach, winning first coach. career win, winning JV golf coach. Congratulations on the victory. We're going to be in Evanston, Illinois next week, and we're going to talk about another one, right? Let's see who we play. We play Monroe on Tuesday. I, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see what we happens. beat Fairfield though. Pulled it out. Pulled it so out. So we lost to Hamilton. We beat Fairfield by four shots Wednesday. So got to win. Not going to be win. winless in my career. Got to win. <laughs> That's all that matters. Hopefully we'll be announcing another win, and hopefully we will be in Evanston, Illinois, for a primetime start next weekend. Saturday at 7:30 as Miami takes on the Northwestern Wildcats as they will head north for the first time this season. So we will hopefully see you then. We're still working out the details on all of that, but as of right now, we are hoping that we will be there. We're gonna act as if we are. Stay tuned for Jesus. an update on that. But until then, we're gonna wrap things up from Paycor. It's been a fun day, guys. A lot of fun. This game is, uh, I've been to this game many times in my life. It's always a fun day of the year. It's a fun game. It's a great atmosphere. I've always enjoyed coming to it, so. Um, it was awesome to be with you guys today. We were treated very well, thanks to all the people in Miami for making this possible for us to be here and, and giving us this space to be in. Great call as always, Jack. Great game. Same to you. Same to you, Luke. And good job, you guys. So we will uh, hopefully see you next week. Absolutely. Thank you to all the Miami Sports Information staff. This is quite an endeavor to play a home game an hour away from your home field, and we certainly appreciate being included in all of the chaos that has uh, been planning this game over the last week, so we well, certainly it's been more than a week. It's yeah, been, it's been year, years. about a year <laughs> yeah. to plan it's, this game. It's truly been years to get this contract worked out and to figure out all the details and playing this game. But and then you got to get all your game ops staff down yeah. here and your sports information and, I mean, and all this. So Miami did a really good job. Really putting good this job. On today. Great Fantastic job. job. Yep. So we're going to wrap things up here from Paycor Stadium on this Saturday. Miami falls to one and two on the season as they drop the victory bell matchup. Against Cincinnati, 38-17 to is the final. We're hoping to be back on the air next Saturday. Miami Northwestern, 7.30 in Evanston. Until then, Luke West Pulley for Patrick Eschen and Jack Schmelzinger saying so long and good afternoon from Baycor Stadium.